Hello Blazers, this is Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. How you guys doing today? Welcome to a brand new podcast. Yes guys, you've heard me right. I'm starting a sort of a new thing, new series on my channel in which I will have tried to make like a podcast every so often, maybe every month or so with a guest. And today guys, on the pilot episode of my epic podcast, I have the man, the legend himself, bold and bankrupt. Yes. Let's give a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> that's the greatest i've never i don't think i've been called legend by other youtubers before but i appreciate the um the sentiment thank you very much that is that true. well here. i've called you a legend multiple times in my videos that's that's truthful um, okay okay well it's an honor to be here on the first like, i know that you just started this um your podcast and that you were i was the first person i believe i don't know how many people turned down your invitation <laughs> before until you got to me probably about 30 people but anyway, I'm the first one who's actually made it at the start of this amazing yeah, yep. future podcast. So cheers for the decision. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so how are you doing, man? Where are you stationed right now? <laughs> right now, I am in actually a rather nice hotel. I was in, I'm in Tashkent, um, yeah. the capital of Uzbekistan. Although they don't call it Tashkent, they call it Toshkent. Everything yeah, that yeah. you thought was an A <laughs> is now an O. So no one told me that. But um, so I'm in Tashkent. The weather's terrible, so I'm taking a little break from um, mm -hmm. traveling. And yesterday, I was in, or for the last week, I've been staying in a hotel here in the capital called the Hotel Uzbekistan, which is a big old Soviet hotel. Yeah, yeah. And um, the thing is with big old Soviet hotels, I've learned, is that they have old Soviet plumbing. So I flushed the okay. toilet yesterday. I flushed the toilet yesterday, and it just wouldn't stop flushing. Like, it was just continuing, <laughs> continuing. So I called the reception. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. I actually, I actually experienced that in my own apartment sometimes. You know, you just, it's like get stuck, and you have to... You don't know the classic Russian life hack. You have your life hack. You have to like take the, uh, what's the uh, the thing that's called which holds the water, and then you have to. Did like, it? You kind of did you it. Kind of have it. Did it, Roman? You did it. You think okay. that you think us Englands, <laughs> us Englanders live in paradise? We have our toilet troubles. Okay. Um, so anyway, so I called reception. They said, okay, we're going to get like the the specialist. He never came. So the whole night. Um, I just had the sound of the bloody toilet just constantly flushing. <laughs> yes. So I got like two hours sleep. I was waking up. <laughs> oh. So, so I checked out. I was like, I'm not going to stay here. They're not going to fix my toilet. So I've moved around the corner. It's even cheaper, but it's a better hotel. It's not so yeah, good, yeah. but I like it. Yeah, I can tell your audio is a lot better because um, here's the thing. Me and Ben, you know, we, we talk all the time pretty much, you know, off camera. And uh, the hotel he was at before, we were, were actually like on a voice call and it was really bad. He was like breaking up and everything like... We've gone back to like the real Soviet times. Um, it's actually very convenient as well that you're in Uzbekistan because it's the same exact time zone as Chudebinsk. So this that's true. This is the perfect environment for this podcast we're doing. Now, um, that's true. Know, what Roman? Can I just say something? What Roman? Yeah. Can I say something before we continue? Yeah, for sure, for sure. What Roman? What Roman? You didn't mention is why we speak all the time. And the fact is that Roman is constantly calling me for fashion advice. <laughs> Um, so he's constantly yes. blowing up my phone and like he, when he buys something, he sends me a picture and he says, I, I want to buy this, but I want your advice first. What do you <laughs> Am I going to get beat up for this? Please help me, Mr. 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 <laughs> Bolden Bankrupt. <laughs> Is this masculine enough for Russia? Yeah. And I always know um, you need something more masculine. But anyway, that's why we always chat. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely true. Now, that's actually funny because actually this is something I wanted to bring up uh, for the, just for the viewers to give it some context that because we talk all the time, um, a lot of funny or cool or interesting yeah. stuff we want to discuss on a podcast. We're already discussing just, you know, normal conversation that's not public. So it's kind of annoying. It's like when we had to record that video, which is funny in itself. This converse, this what I'm saying right now, I've already told you off camera, but I have to you know, do it for the podcast again. To provide <laughs> know, some like, why are you repeating this? <laughs> I'm saying, you know, we discuss all these interesting topics. And sometimes me and you talk like on, on the call and I'm like, damn, this would be a good podcast, you know, bet. But it's like, it's just a private conversation. I'm like, damn it, you know. I but, think uh, what Roman's saying is that if this podcast turns out boring, <laughs> um, it's just because we've already had the cool stuff. No, no, offline. no, it's fine. It's fine. So, I've, actually picked, I've actually picked a bunch of stuff. We, me and you never discuss really that deep oh. in, uh, in, like, in the conversation. Wow. Yeah, so actually... Intriguing, this is, intriguing. Yeah, this is actually the first thing I wanted to sort of ask you because I've actually never asked you this in a uh for, you know mano y mano conversation i guess is we, uh, yeah so we're gonna ask about the women let's get on with it okay <laughs> here we go i am the man to ask that's true but also i wanted to ask you about uh, <laughs> uh how did you get your starts on youtube in general like I, I don't i don't know that i don't know how you began oh okay, okay. your youtube okay. career okay okay um yeah it's not something i really spy i think most people know that harold balder 
um, mm -hmm. a friend of mine and a YouTuber, um, played a massive part. Harold was a mate of mine. When I first met him, he was starting his YouTube channel and um, just like doing videos, small videos about business and about economics in Ukraine. And so I watched him, I watched his channel kind of continue in progress over yeah. like two years, basically. And he kept saying to me, like, why don't you start a channel and we'll um, Wait, you know, you we can met, travel you together, met, we can make films together. Or, uh... Yeah, we met online because we were going to the same, we were looking for a gym. And he said, <laughs> okay. I posted a question online, where's like a cool gym? And he said, oh, there's this one in, in Kiev, basically. So we ended up mm. training together. And then we started chatting. We got to know each other. We became friends. And yeah, so he started his YouTube channel, um, like pretty much the day when I met him, I think. Um, and he kept saying to me, like, we were traveling together and he'd be filming and I wouldn't. I'd be like, I don't want to be in your film, like whatever. Yeah. Um, and he's like, why don't you, why don't you start your own channel? And we'll do it together. And I was like, no, 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 Charles, <laughs> that is not for me. Because I always had this thing, you know, for me, it's like, I want to be successful in life. Yes. Like, I wanted to be successful without anyone knowing who I was. I always okay. had the example. I don't know if you know who um, Bernie Topan is. Um, no, I'm so, not, I'm not, you know I'm not, I'm not is? familiar. Right. Do you know who Elton John is? Yes, <laughs> of course. Right. Well, Bernie Topan. Yeah, I'm not that much of a. I'm not that much of a zoomer, Mister Bond. I know so, who Elton John is. <laughs> well, I, my point was, you know who Elton John was, yes. but you don't know who wrote all the songs, and that is ah, okay. Bernie Topan. Okay. So Bernie Topan is the man behind Elton John. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, <laughs> and so he's the one who writes all the lyrics uh, and stuff, but no one knows him. So Bernie Topan's like, you know, he's successful, he's a millionaire yeah. and whatever, but no one knows him. Mm -hmm. He can go down the safe way, and I always, I had no desire. Of being like the Elton John, okay. I'd rather be Bernie Topan. Yeah, the and man so behind the scenes, no, no, basically. Yes, yeah. I don't want to be the man behind Elton John. Um, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, I would like, like rather just like have no one know who I was. Yeah. Um, and then, so he kept like not harassing me, but he was like, "Come on, like this is ridiculous. Why not? Why not? It's not so bad." But you're saying is you, you wanted to be the man behind uh, Howard Bo Howard Boulder. Howard <laughs> 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 Yes, exactly. That was my true dream. That was my true dream. And who's to say I wasn't? But anyway, yeah. eventually, um, I don't know what happened. I remember one night we were texting. I was in bed in England, and um, he must have just struck me. Oh, I tell you what happened. No, I tell. I, let's take it step one back. I didn't think I could do it. I didn't think I could. I was like, no one wants to hear what I've got to say. I'm boring. I'm like, I just don't know how to ramble. Mm -hmm. I saw one of his videos from Vietnam, um, and he was cruising around. Am I taking up a lot of time? I don't know if I'm rambling too much. Like, I don't know no, like, what your question is. It's like, fine. No, no. I mean, that's okay, okay, people good. love hearing you and me speak, you know, we'll get to, I, I, I mean, I want to hear your story, you know, it's, you go okay, ahead. Okay, cool. In that case, I'll, I'll ramble on. I remember seeing a video of his and he was in Vietnam and he was cruising around the scooter and he was just driving through like one of the cities of Vietnam. He had his camera and he was just mm -hmm. rambling. He would like see a building and he'd like say something funny about the building and like comment yeah, yeah. on something. I remember watching him just, he was saying to me at the time, like, why don't you become a YouTuber with me? And I was saying, I can't do that. I can't ramble. I wouldn't yeah. know what to say. And he was like, you'll just do it. You'll learn how to do it. And um, so anyway, I was like, I can't do it. And then a friend of mine called um, Mark, anyway, my friend Mark, an American guy, mm -hmm. he said to me, he wrote me an email. Like, he said, Ben, I've seen your friend Harold. I think you could do that. I think your personality yeah. is suited to that. Why don't you do it? And that little email kind of made me think, oh, maybe I could. And That's then a couple of weeks true, later, yeah. I was, Because like, sometimes little things like that can change your perception a lot. Like, actually, me, think... me and you recording this podcast came from a conversation I had with my friends, like, in real life. I was talking to them about, like, I was saying, um, you know, I feel kind of stagnant in my YouTube career, whatever. Like, I'm not doing anything new, sort of, you know? And he was like, just do, like, do a podcast. And I was like, he was like, you can, you can invite Bald on, you can invite, like, you know, all your other friends, like Pyro or whatever. He's probably coming to the podcast as well, just a little announcement. But uh, uh, I was like... Yes, I can. And we're literally doing it right now. So, you know, little things like that actually can start a, start an empire, the bold and bankrupt empire, you know? <laughs> well, I, I really think that decisions in life don't come from one momentous event. It comes from little baby coincidences mm -hmm. in a row, you know? Um, so just like my friend sending that email at that time um, and Harold, like, pushing me to do it at that time, just yeah. little things started to give me confidence that I could do it. Maybe I got some little bits of confidence from somewhere else that I don't remember now. But, um, and so I started researching cameras and stuff, and I said, okay, you know what, I'll do it. I was in bed one night texting with Harold, mm -hmm. um, and he said, look, you can do it or not. And I was like, you know what, sod it, I'm going to do it. And I ordered a camera, I researched, I found the Sony. I remember watching this guy for, like, I, 
researched so long for the camera. Because at that time, I thought it was all about the camera. And there was this guy on YouTube. I think he's called Everyday Dad. Hello there. <laughs> I started a trend. He's called Everyday Dad. And he had a tech channel. And he spoke oh, yeah, about I know tech. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Very charismatic guy from America. And um, he had this tech channel um, talking about it. And he, he said the Sony was like the best one. And no one else was using the Sony at that time. Everyone yeah. had a GoPro or a yeah. DSLR. And I was like, and the Sony is actually like one of the more expensive ones. It's like double mm-hmm. what a GoPro is. And um, I wasn't exactly like flush with money, but I thought, you know what, if I'm going to do it, I'll try and do it properly. And so I ordered the Sony. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I it's thought, great, where can yeah. I go for my first? Ch- it's it a life changer. One. It's a life changer. You know, oh. I've got it. And like vlogging, is sh- I mean, I recorded only one, one video with it, but, uh, you know, vlogging just feels so good as compared to, you know, hey, uh, you know, carrying around my uh, my big ass, you know, no, uh, there's oh, it's life camera changing. Yeah, on it's, it's I can't imagine annoying. how you do it. I travel with Simon Wilson. I went to Mexico with Simon Wilson, a British. Uh, oh, and he holds like a DSLR. He's got a freaking DSLR. Yeah, and not yeah. only a DSLR, I'm one of those like tripod triple things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, it's so heavy. He has to carry it in his chubby forearm. Maybe like, he's got. Maybe he's got. Head. He's got guns. You know, he's like maybe. carrying cameras around got, all day. His guns <laughs> come from burgers, not from the camera. But anyway. Um, and so, yeah, but the only thing about the Sony, what I will say is they need an update. I mean, how how old is it now? Oh, I yeah. Mean, they should be bringing out yeah, something yeah, yeah. like, you know, some kind of update. But um, They're probably... anyway, so, yeah, I bought a camera. I flew to India and the rest is, you know, uh, some kind of history. So you'd anyway. say your main, yeah, like, something. mentor or, like, inspiration was Harold? Or, I have uh... two. I have two. I would, I would say I have two. I would say um, NFK. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, I, would say, <laughs> I would say Harold for sure because... I was making so many mistakes in the beginning. It's like anything. You have to learn your craft, so to speak, right? So like my videos, he'd say, why have you put that in? Why did you do that? Make that more succinct. Mm -hmm. Do that, do that. And I was like, oh, so I got so much information. Yeah, of course, you need that to cut corners. You know, otherwise it will just take you that much longer. And I felt sorry for Harold. He never had that. He had to learn it all by himself. The other person, when I went to India, was a guy called Carl Rock, who has a channel in India. Um, And like just from, I've never spoken to Carl. Um, but just from observing like his thumbnails and his titles, mm-hmm. like avoid this man, um, you know, like India's worst scam and all that kind of stuff. And so when I was doing India videos, like they kind of clickbaity, but I was like, oh my God, he was getting such success. He was yeah. having 10 million views and yeah, stuff. Yeah. It was crazy. Um, and so Carl Rock, I stole a lot. So of he was like ideas. a lot of your inspiration, essentially. A In a one. sense. I mean, yeah, like for his thumbnail game. And yeah, and like the India vids, yeah. like Carl Rock for sure, like talking okay. a lot. So um, yeah, shout out to Carl. That's cool. Um, Here's the thing I actually wanted to talk about, and this kind of a big topic, um, which, you know, is obviously your, uh, when you, you know, your entire point of your entire channel is, you know, travel vlogs. But I just wanted to know, I mean, I know you've traveled for a long time, right? You've traveled, you told me, you know, you went to that, like, uh, there was a time when when in 1993, they were like shooting tanks at like the White uh, House, you know, the parliament building in Russia. Uh, Ben was there. And like, you know, that obviously means you've been traveling like 20, 30 years ago already. But has it always How been? How dare you? <laughs> Don't reveal 20, my age. I'm 20 years old. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway. Uh, uh, <laughs> what year were you born? Uh, me, 1998. For fuck's sake. <laughs> am I the oldest bloke on I am the son. Jesus I am the son of Lord and Bankrupt. It's actually, that's actually that, the yeah. truth. In 1993, I met um, a young lady from Chelyabinsk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she just had a very long gesticulation period. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I was saying, uh, was there ever a point in, in your life where you lived a more like sedentary lifestyle, where you didn't like travel all the time, where you just like lived a life where you lived in one city, you, you, you had a job or you had a business? I know you had some sort of business, right? Was there ever a point in your life where you couldn't not even afford maybe not even financially but just in your lifestyle you couldn't afford to just you know leave everything behind and sort of go with whatever you know you know what i mean yeah of course i do mate when i came back from india i lived in india for a couple of years um on and off when mm-hmm. i came back from india i spent basically um how many years did i spend in one town without leaving basically like a 30 mile radius i lived in one town for like it was like five years or something mm-hmm, mm-hmm. four years maybe i just didn't go abroad i couldn't afford it I, I was working. Um, I was working as a roofer. Um, okay. I was working as a roofer, as a builder, as a labourer, um, just doing because the thing with like moving quickly um, or, or traveling early is like your kind of education goes to, to goes to crap. And so like I was just doing like crappy jobs, trying to save up some money and stuff like that to like mm-hmm. you know make my next plan and just going down a bit of a dark path really. Um, 
getting into um, uh, my life was basically living for the weekend yeah. you know, like pretty crappy jobs living for the weekend and on the weekend just blowing all my money on drink and on drugs yeah, I can imagine. Just, like, yeah, yeah. stuff like that of course. i mean when you live a life like so that, I you know, it's, that it's unfulfilling. and then when i married you know sorry i mean it's so, unfulfilling so in a sense it's unfulfilling i guess in a sense when you just stay in one place and uh you know you live for the weekend it is when yeah, yeah, it is. I don't know how I got into that because, like, from a young age, like at school, all my best friends, all my friends at school mm -hmm. were um, foreign kids. As in, like, like, we had Pakistanis there, we had kids from America and stuff like that. And I was always fascinated by them, especially, like, my mates. All my mates were, like, from Hong Kong. I was so yeah. fascinated by their food and stuff, eating noodles with them and all that kind of stuff. So I always had that thing within me to, like, look beyond. But you get into a rut, you know? You get into a situation, yeah. you kind of can't get out of it. Um, and so definitely for, like, two periods of my life, I was just stuck in one place doing just... Mm -hmm. dead end stuff in my life not achieving anything so do you feel like you're more happy now definitely or not like how does it do you feel like you're more happy just when you're in your kind of lifestyle that you're in right now you know just traveling all the time and stuff yeah i mean there's downsides to do that and i'm coming to the end of that period i think of my life as i get older i'm probably looking to go back to a more mm -hmm. sedentary lifestyle but am i happy i'm the happiest i've ever been yeah sure um i'm very content with my life at the moment and I'm in a good headspace. I'm positive and stuff like that. So yeah, my life's um, my life's good at the moment. But like this constant moving, like it has to end at some point because you mm -hmm. sacrifice so much in terms of friendships, relationships, yeah. having a base. You know, Do you I feel... don't really. I like. I don't see my friends for a long time. Yeah. Do you feel like um, you said you might return to like a more sensual lifestyle? But do you feel like your channel right now? I mean, your job is traveling, basically. Yep. So do you feel like that restricts you? Like, imagine someday you're gonna you're gonna wanna uh, sort of live a less you know life you know not moving all the time or whatever. But maybe you will have to be limited by your uh, by your occupation, let's say, to travel, and that would not let you like live the life you want in a sense. You know what I mean? Well, I mean the travel channel will definitely end. Um, if I'm sedentary, I can't yeah. do that. I could still do something on YouTube, but it might be something a little bit more like you. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I could do maybe I could do something of a history channel or something like that. Something, but mm -hmm. just where I'm sitting in my lounge, you know, and don't have to, you don't have to um, do all the travel. Also, the travel takes a toll on your health. You constantly okay. get run down. You know, you're eating in crappy restaurants, especially mm -hmm. the type of travel I do. I'm not traveling around Thailand, right, or the United States. Mm -hmm. I'm traveling through, you know, these Soviet back roads, and you're not there. Like, eating you know, random, towns, random right? shibudeks that give you a stomach ache. <laughs> exactly, exactly. People say, why are you always ill? Well, flipping heck, I'm on marsh route because half the day. You know, trains, I'm yeah. like constantly like going through villages. I'm eating crappy food. I'm staying in cold, unheated Soviet hotels. Like, it's amazing that I'm not more sick. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're not, you're not even um, dressed to the occasion half the time, you know? Like I see, well, I see the way you're that's dressed, and like the weather is like way you know you're you're underdressed for the for the cold you're usually in. That's what I noticed. Well, the thing that everyone knows about all the bankrupts um, is that it's always like style before um, <laughs> practicality with me. So it's yeah, I won't I won't it's change my style for the minus it's first 20. the drip. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, it's the converse and um, Uniqlo drip. But I just can't let the people down by wearing. I'm wearing Uniqlo else, right now because Uniqlo is drip. Are you? Where'd you get it? You haven't got one in Chelyabinsk. Yeah, course. we don't have Uniqlo in Chelyabinsk. I got it on the Uniqlo website. This video is not sponsored by Uniqlo. <laughs> this wow, two Uniqlo wearers. Yeah, but Bolden Bankrupt. Who thought? Who yeah, Bolden Bankrupt is part of the Uniqlo gang. No, but can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Yeah, yeah. I've worn the same pair of trousers, and I don't mean the same, literal same pair, but Uniqlo sell these tracksuit bottoms, like tracksuit yeah. bottoms, as we say in English. Um, these blue ones, cotton. They cost twenty nineteen ninety nine. I've been wearing, for the last five years, the same bloody pair of pants. I mean, I've obviously had like 20, but 30 You're lying. I've, years, seen, but... I've just seen you wear New Balance joggers. <laughs> Well, well, That's not well, Uniqlo. yeah. Called out, called out. Because I, because, because I was recently in Ukraine for a month. There's no Uniqlo, and I ruined my Uniqlo. Once. Oh, they don't and have Uniqlo like, in Ukraine. Up. Don't have you? No, no Uniqlo. <laughs> okay, no Uniqlo. Um, and so I had to like sell out a little bit and go with this yeah. bloody New Balance in blaze and nasty trousers. But anyway, <laughs> so I've been wearing anyway Uniqlo. I've been wearing the same pair of pants because when I met Alina. She, um, I used to wear before, like this. Is what people don't know, and um, I met Alina about five years ago, and I used to dress quite fancy. I was yeah. into like the blazers, sports jackets, and stuff like that. You know, I'd have all like the bling belt. Oh, it was ridiculous. Yeah, we actually discussed that. this off camera as well when we we're just talking, like when we we're discussing, you know, fashion and stuff. And 
You know, I remember when actually, you know, me and you, when we were recording a vlog in Chelyabinsk, we were like sitting at a tram stop, remember? And we, you were talking to me and you were saying how like you used to be way more into fashion at one point in your life and you would spend like a lot of money on it, but you know, oh. you just don't now. I I used to wear like Prada shoes. Yeah, sorry, my my headphone fell out of my ear accidentally. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I used to like I, I used to like, like wear Prada shoes. I'd I'd have all kinds of like spend money. And when I met Aline, but it's not about that side. But when I met Aline, yeah. so my style was basically it was like smart jeans, mm -hmm. smart belt, shirt, and a blazer. That was always my yeah, style. Yeah. I always like you know I was like I don't know why I like kind of like. That. And when I met Alina, she was like, "Why are you dressing like you're going to the office or like to Wimbledon?" Yeah. Like, why are you dressed? You don't have to dress in a blazer. Like, why are you wearing a blazer? Like, just be chilled. It's ridiculous. And so, um, I don't know. That left a bit of an impression on me. So, um, after that, I was like, yeah, she's right. Why am I, like, wearing a blazer? I can just wear a bloody hoodie or I can wear a... I don't have a boss. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I changed my style when I met Alina. And yeah. I... Well, yeah. Look at me now. Now it's in your clothes. Now it's in your clothes. A 45 year old man wearing freaking New Balance in blazer and trousers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, good God. Oh, well, actually, here's the thing I wanted to dive in, which is actually very fitting to what we're discussing is like, um, you know, you were you mentioned how uh, travel, you know, takes its own personal relationships, uh, relationships and stuff, you know, and I feel that to a certain degree as well. Like, to be honest, right now, I would say I'm in the in a in a rut in a certain to a certain degree because, you know, I'm stuck in Russia. I can't I mean, I can't go to some countries like I can go to as far as I know, uh, like I, I can go to like maybe some Asian countries like Turkey now. Right. But like, I want to yeah. go, I personally yeah. want to go to Europe, you know, and Europe is actually banned for Russians right now, you know, because of like the Russia's handling of the coronavirus or whatever. Like and Russians... for Brits too. Yeah. We're okay. in the same boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bro fist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Russians can't go into Europe right now. So like, I'm not really left with any uh, options to travel. I, I could try, I'm going to travel to Moscow pretty soon, I think, maybe like this month or next month or whatever. But, um, you know, I'm kind of in the same realm and I feel like, you know, I'm kind of stuck in the rut in that way as well. And also personal relationships, that's a fact as well. Because like, you know, when you start dating somebody, for example, and when it's very fresh, you don't want to, you don't want to like, you don't want to, in a sense, like lose it or whatever. So you want to be yep. around as much as possible. You don't want to uh, go anywhere. You know, I experienced that. And also, you know, I want to, you know, see family, whatever. So it's, it's hard. And uh, also another thing, uh, me and you also discussed this off camera as well. But I think this is a good, 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 good discussion too is um you know remember when we were talking about like you know all this fashion and stuff clothing or whatever how like me being very into this stuff and you know you know in widening my wardrobe you know it makes you you know i i think of myself right 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 i'm a young guy uh i should be free to go anywhere you know there's nothing tying me down whatever right but then i realize how much shit i have <laughs> it's like jesus christ Oof, man. Yeah. I think um, one of the best things I decided to do was I used to collect things. And I don't mean collect things as in I had a collection of mm -hmm. coins or stamps. So I would just, I couldn't help. I think it was just a way to cope with unhappiness was to mm -hmm. spend money and buy shit. Like I needed a new, you know, I wanted that little high. I'd go down yeah. to the supermarket, or not the supermarket, go down to the shops on a Saturday, buy something. And so I just had so much stuff. Um, and then I don't know how it happened or what happened. Maybe because I was traveling, I couldn't take it. I just threw like 99% of it away. Mm -hmm. And now all I have, have some stuff in England, but like, I, basically, I could put everything I own um, mm -hmm. into two holdals. Yeah. And like, apart from my books, I've got a lot of books, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I could put everything I own, like clothes, everything I own, my, you know, um, into two holdals and I could be ready to go. And I like that. I like to be free. That's why I don't wear any jewelry. I don't wear a watch. Yeah. I don't have like anything. I just like to be unencumbered um, by life and by everything. So I'm just yeah, free yeah, yeah. to move. That's why I travel with a little backpack. Um, just, I just like the mm -hmm. feeling of just that freedom of not being tied down yeah. by anything. I mean, it's exactly like, I think this, you know, this idea that I also mentioned when we were talking of, you know, how like, uh, uh, you know, things you own end up owning you basically. So the more stuff you have, the more it ties you down. You're afraid of losing it. Sure. You're afraid of damaging sure. something. For example, especially for you, right? Since you don't wear like jewelry or watches or anything, which I love to do. I'm not wearing any right now, to be honest. I don't know why, but, uh, usually I am. And, uh, you know, you're always, like, kind of wary of, you know, maybe I'm going to, like, bump something, you know, whatever. Uh, or, like, this nice clothing I have. I'm, I don't want to go to this, like, uh, to this mud lake where I'm going to, you know, cover myself in shit. <laughs> but when you, uh, you, when you don't care, it's great because you can, like, 
traverse anything, I guess, in a sense. And I feel like that's what about you. It's like you're wearing white Converse sneakers. You're down to get them destroyed. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, that's why it was kind of liberating. Like when we going back to what I said, like about yeah. Alina. Like when I got rid of all that kind of like fancy side of me, it was really liberating. Like just not caring about it. Roll out of bed. It's like when I shaved mm -hmm. my head. You know, same sort of thing. First time. It's like, oh, it's liberating. Like, I don't have to worry about that anymore. You know, it's like I don't have hair to like try and hide it. Like it's receding. Oh, how do uh -huh. I hide? You uh -huh. don't like you shave it. It's gone. It's like okay, whatever. Like it just it's a weight off you. And what like, age did you? Weight. What age did you shave your head first? First time? I remember. I remember coming back from India when I was nineteen. I've been to India for like a little holiday. Okay. And um, my mum said to me, out of nowhere, she said, oh, would you ever shave your head when you're older? Would you uh -huh. mind shaving your head when you're older? Would you be... And I didn't realise at the time. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll shave my head. Why not? I didn't realise what she meant until years later. She'd obviously seen that I was starting to recede. Okay. And she was just like at testing 19. the waters about how I would... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That how I would feel about going bald. Yeah. Because there was no other reason to like ask that question. Um, and then when I went back to India a few months later, I was a bit sick and I went back to India like six months later and people said, oh, you look older. But I never realized kind mm -hmm. of like, it was a slow thing. But so it started when I was about 19. But it wasn't until I obviously went through the terrible period of losing your hair, which is the worst thing for a man. Mm -hmm. Being bald isn't a problem, but going bald mm -hmm. is a mental fuck up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so eventually after doing all the, you know, researching, should I have a hair transplant? You know, mm -hmm. how do I hide it? I just wore a hat, you know, brush it forward, all the different yeah. styles, use the old topic, you know, all those like things, those crutches that you like had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, eventually Cold. when Cold I was- with yeah. the with the, uh, with the hair, hair loss, Man, essentially. Honestly, honestly, honestly. But that bloody stuff is good. That topic, if you've got enough hair, <laughs> that topic, it's like, it binds onto your hair. And um, I remember the first time I did it, my cousin applied it for me. He was like, I ordered some topic and we got it. And he said, come on, let's go to B&Q, which is uh -huh. in England. It's like, a, uh, it's like a, a warehouse, or a shopping warehouse. Okay. And um, he's like, we're going to test if anyone notices. And I was so nervous. And it's basically, you're just putting like black stuff on your scalp yeah, yeah, yeah. to blend it in with your hair. And I was like, you know, just walking around, seeing if anyone was giving me like dirty looks or like, like oh, what's wrong with this? Probably head? nobody like, cares it's to be It's amazing stuff. No, I give yeah. this shit. Of course, of course. But the problem is, it's like, um, it's a crutch. And when you've got a crutch, you're nervous about it. What if you go to bed with a girl and you wake up and like it's all over the pillow or like <laughs> suddenly you're bald? Like there's all these things you worry about. So the best thing that you can do as a going bald man is just to bloody shave. I mean, hair transplants don't work. So when? Um, so I, I mean, Elon anything. Musk. Elon Musk had a good one. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. I take it back. <laughs> there seems to be a way that the multis can do it or elon i don't know what he did he was bald yeah. right like we've seen the pictures of elon yeah. when he was like he's now a dime piece right mm -hmm. i mean what happened to elon he's an absolute fucking dimey um but there's pictures of elon like back in the days yeah of whatever he, he's that got like nothing yeah. he's like he's got like the yeah, monk, nothing the like monk, the monk uh, haircut thing exactly exactly <laughs> but not just his hair just everything about him was just unattractive right he was just money like, makes people like, more attractive and, you know yeah, that's just what happens well, it certainly worked for him I yeah. mean, he was with Amber Heard and like all these like, so yeah, I mean, some things like worked out well for him. But then I suppose then you look at um, Ezos. Why is he bald? Like, okay, maybe he just doesn't care, right? So maybe that's I think it, I think it but, works um, for I, him, to be honest, you know, for his look. I, I, I tell, he looks like, a, he's what, like a super it. villain. He's a super villain, you know. Sure. One Where million dollars, to, um, you know. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But my point, yeah. So there would be no bald rich men, maybe, though, if it really did work. I don't know yeah. how Elon Musk has bucked the trend. But also Lewis Hamilton was, ball, 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 was balding and he suddenly got like a bloody ponytail. And he's got like, mm. but sorry, excuse me. No, the thing with a hair transplant is they can only take what you've already got. So they're only taking from the bit that never falls out here and putting it on top. Okay. Right. So there's only so many hairs you have. So if you're just like receding a bit or you're thinning a bit, you can do that. But you're still going to shed natural hairs on the top mm -hmm, of your head mm -hmm. right and you're taking from here so you can have a patch here and you're putting there it's just a big screw up look at joe rogan he's got like the scars there's different ways of yeah, doing yeah. it he's got scars where he like strip it can surgery really, it can really it's mess it up it. you know yeah if it goes For wrong sure. it's really gonna you know mess you up For sure so I mean, and also I miss, you're though... still got a crutch okay yeah yeah that's but what age did you shave though you, you said you started at 30 19. i think i was like yeah so i started at 19 but i just didn't shave yeah. i mean i shaved it a few times and grew it back because people would say mm -hmm. oh no why did you shave your head i don't like that that doesn't suit you mm -hmm. and you're like oh bloody hell i'm gonna grow it back so you like go through this like backwards and forwards and and then eventually when i said right screw it i'm shaving yeah. my head like this is it 
I think I was like 34 or 35. Okay. And I was like, okay. I mean, I should have done it much sooner. Yeah. But I did it then. And then like for the first time, I, for a month or so, you're like nervous about it. You're embarrassed about it. And then you just kind of grow mm-hmm. into it. And now people say, oh, I can't imagine you with hair. Exactly. Oh, you've yeah. got such a nice head for like being a bald man. No, but your head is no nice. Has, your head is no, nice. But no one said that. <laughs> Roman, calm down. Calm down. You'll start the rumors. Um, and so, um, so because you did recently say on a post that you want to rest your balls on my face. So let's not like give people things to talk about. So... Um, <laughs> no it is it is liberating and if you it's not that my head's any different no one said i had a nice head before when i shaved my head right yeah. the difference is i'm more confident with it now mm-hmm. so you kind of give off more of an aura of confidence which means people like think oh you've got a nice and you head. started you turned but, it into your brand essentially you know so where you've got to monetize your disasters yeah, exactly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean you know yeah it's a messed up topic it's a big problem you know i'm like i'm conscious of it but like as far as i understand i don't have any issues like my hairline is not like the greatest, but it's been that way for like the last seven years or like forever. It's because Has like, your dad got hair. Uh, my I, my I don't, I don't think my dad is even bald either. Uh, They're laughing. My grandfather, my grandfather, my grandfather had a pretty good head of hair, I think. Uh, so that's it then. That's it yeah. then. It, you know this this like hairline this like widow's peak thing I got. Yeah. My, my, my mom has the entire the exact same hairline as me. Like she has the that's exact it. same kind of thing you know actually i have that's the exact i look like my you've mom got the like, same hair. Yeah, you've got the same haircut what do you mean <laughs> I, it, that's true no there's actually a picture on my instagram i don't know if i'm gonna put it up on the screen but uh there's like a picture on instagram with, with my mom and we literally look exactly the same like i'm a, i'm a complete copy of my mom in that sense but i hope i hope the uh i hope the uh, curse of going bald will, will evade me but it's probably won't you know it, it really... how old do you know how old do you know 23 yeah. 23 i would say <laughs> You're probably going to be okay. No, I think I think you're going to be okay. I think you're going to be okay. If you're not thinning at the back, I think. I mean, yeah, you can I'm never not, say I'm people not. people bald at different ages. But um, but anyway, let's say the worst came to the worst. I mean, I think you would look better with no hair than that ridiculous haircut you've got. But I mean, you look get like over a it. freaking. I look like I don't know, dude. I feel like if I went bald, you're like a pretty young Russian girl. <laughs> if I went bald, people would be like, I don't know. I'd just look. I'd just look like very unapproachable i feel like because i already kind of have a rest and bitch face you know what i mean i love to like walk around like this you know what i mean and then like if i had my head bald i'd look like a fucking like skinhead that nobody wants to talk to or whatever i don't know with your stone island yeah your yeah on. With, with my bomber yeah. jacket and like levi's you know <laughs> chicks love it chicks love it <laughs> all right um well uh Let's get back, uh, but I, I guess talk about a little bit of travel. This is actually one I wanted to talk about with you too, because I feel like I could get some good advice from you on this. Um, is I wanted to talk about like traveling alone versus traveling with somebody. Because here's let me make my little case here. Basically, right? We were saying we were saying how you know right now I want to travel, but I can't really go to Europe. The reason why I want to go to Europe right now is because if I was to travel alone right now. I feel like I'd be very comfortable to go into Europe because I've already been there, you know, two times. I've been to what four countries in two trips, <clears throat> and um, I feel like I went, you know, with my ex girlfriends. And I feel like because I've been to a few countries already, I can already understand the vibe. And if I was to go alone, I'd feel fine, and like I'd find I don't I don't know I didn't even know how to explain it. I just don't have any experience, you know, traveling by myself. Uh, I mean, I, I, abroad, obviously. I've went by myself to like, uh, you know, St. Petersburg, Moscow, whatever, but I don't really think that, you know, counts. So um, I feel like if I went to like, for example, an Asian country or um, I don't know, the Middle East, I don't know, anything, anywhere that's like not Europe, not because Europe is pretty similar to Russia, right? Still, it's better, maybe in some ways or whatever, you know, just infrastructure, but it's kind of it's kind of the same culture, I guess, right? True, true. And if I go true. to Asia, I feel like alone my first time, I'll be kind of like overwhelmed by it, or I don't know, or is that something I should not be afraid of at all? You know what I mean? Well, you shouldn't be afraid of it, no. Um, I think it's scary from the outside. Everything's scary from a distance, is it? Doing it, doing YouTube is scary from a distance. Mm-hmm. Then you pick up the camera, it's not scary. You know, go into that party, you know, where you think, oh my God, I'm going to have to talk to people. They're going to think I'm a mm-hmm. bloody idiot. Like, I won't make a friend there. But then you get there and all of a sudden you forget all those fears and it's okay. Everything's scary from a distance. Um, and I think travel is the same. 
you know i get that and i still get that like new countries i go to for the first time by myself mm-hmm. i'm still like nervous and stuff what's it going to be like and then you get there and you fall into it um yeah so i mean your question is what should where should you go like should you like stick to europe because you'd be more com- more comfortable there or like, where do you want to go just go where you want to go and sod like how you're going to feel i yeah. think you're going to be absolutely fine and also you're a bloody famous youtuber with like you know hundreds of thousands of people around the world and loads of them would like to come and have a beer with you and hang yeah, out with you true. and have a selfie yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, for you, it's slightly different than other people. And also, you always meet people, you know, especially like Russians are everywhere now, right? Yeah. Um, so if you went to like Thailand, if that was your interest or something, you're going to like check into a hostel or whatever, a hotel, and you're going to like meet someone like within an hour and then mm-hmm. you've got a buddy for that trip. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and also it depends though, Roman, it depends if you're filming this trip or if you're, fil- or if you're just going on holiday, mm-hmm. right? You're not going to travel with someone probably if you're filming it. Uh, you're not going to pick up like meet with some like this random dude and like travel if you're filming as well probably yeah yeah so I that's guess. more like a, so. a business trip in terms of like your channel yeah yeah um, I guess so. so well yeah um i guess i guess it's like just the, my lack of experience where i feel uh as if I, I i guess i just need to take a trip alone you know and sure. then i'll get a feeling for it because i i don't like it's you know what's hard for me is that um I guess, I guess, you know, the reason, the real reason why is because when I went traveling with my ex uh, to like Europe, she was kind of in charge of the planning of everything, like going to museums and like uh, taking like these trips with like guided tours or whatever. And I was kind of like only like uh, paying for restaurants and just chilling, you know, I wasn't doing shit. So uh, she was organized. She was essentially organizing the, the way trip. you make it sound is amazing. It's like. She was the boss. I was just paying for everything. No, no, I wasn't paying. No, no, that's not true. She was. Not, I was not paying for everything. She was paying for all the guided tours. It was basically 50-50. Yeah, okay, it, it was okay. basically. No, no, I'm not saying okay. anything like that. But uh, okay. she, she, she was actually like the adult that was in charge of everything. You know, organizing everything. And I was just a fucking dumbass, just going around like, oh, mom, when, when we go next, you know. So this is why oh, I have like, I haven't planned a single fucking trip. And, uh, oh my god! I guess that's why I feel like so incompetent about going alone. It's like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? I don't have anybody to plan my entire journey for me, you know? Jeez, just being Christ, a I fucking child, I guess. I can't. I can't. <laughs> yes, grow the hell up for God's sake! You're twenty bloody two. Like, surely you can go to Three. Prague by yourself now. Twenty three, even yeah. worse. <laughs> what do you want, mummy, to come with you? That's you not. That's not giving me a, a new points. Mommy? Let's not give me any Jeez. points being 23 over 22 in that situation. Just like, just go. But I mean, don't go alone if you don't have to. Don't go just because maybe you've got mates who want to go with you, but you're like, no, I need to do a trip alone to get over my yeah. fears. No. Like if, you, if you're if going alone because you want to go alone, cool. But if you've got mates who want to go with you, it's not like some kind of challenge. I need to like break myself in by having mm-hmm. a solo trip so I can do future solo trips. Yeah. If it happens to be that you go solo, sure. But if you want to go with your mates, go with your mates. It'll be better fun. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's the thing I was discussing with you as well. Is that like, uh, here's the thing: is that I don't really have much friends uh, in real life yeah. in Russia who I can travel with because, like, we're just, I, I've told uh, Ben this off camera, but basically, like, my real life friends are kind of divided into two camps. I would say, you know, one half of my friends are like, you know, people that are more extroverted, outgoing, they like to party, you know, that stuff. It's it's a lot of fun hanging out with them, whatever. They would be down to go anywhere, basically, but. Those people that are hanging out and, you know, partying, they're usually broke and they can't afford to travel anywhere with me. And the people that in my friends, in my friend circle who make some money, maybe could afford to take a trip. They literally just like, you know, epic gamers who just sit at home for all the time, you know, and don't do anything. Don't go outside, essentially. They're more introverted, so they don't care. So I have this kind of problem where the only people I could really travel with is like if, if we travel with Ben, for example, he's my, you know, he, he could be my best travel buddy. Potentially. I'm not planning your museum trips around. I'm not, some I will not, capitals. I will not make you, I will not make you, I will not make you plan anything. Okay. I will not. I just need someone. Okay. To travel with. I will not, I will not make you plan. I will, I will learn. I will learn to plan myself. Okay. Oh my I promise God. you. Oh I promise God. you. But uh, be okay. no, but I understand that. Of course, you live in Chelyabinsk. It's not like people there. A lot of people have like a disposable income that they can suddenly yeah. just take off. And you know, not everyone's Russia's most famous YouTuber. So I totally get that. Um, yeah, that's difficult if you don't have mates. Um, I I, but... I only have like people as well. Other YouTubers that are like from UK or whatever. They're also the the ones I could potentially travel with, and I probably will at some point. Like I, I want to when uh when you know COVID's over and uh. 
if uh, you know borders are open I'm probably gonna have a European trip and I'm gonna meet up with some uh, YouTube mates or whatever but uh, yeah definitely definitely yeah. but yeah, it's good to spread it, your horizons as, as far as like in real life uh, I don't really have much uh, much people to travel with which is pretty annoying I get it I get it I totally get it yeah being down in Chelyabinsk yeah it's um, yeah you hang out what you're saying is you hang out with broke ass punks all day <laughs> <laughs> That is not what I said. <laughs> That's what you're saying. <laughs> you are so horrible about your friends. They can't help it. And you're like, I've got to get out of this city. All my friends oh are getting this. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, I mean, but I would say, I guess, most of your trips you've done in your life, you, you went alone or? Yeah, like... yeah, 90%. The only person who's ever traveled, I went, like, I had a cousin. I did a couple of trips with a cousin. Um, like long before YouTube, all this. Yeah, um, yeah. And apart from that, the only person like my travel partner has been, yeah, Harold, mm -hmm. my friend Sasha. But I've had like two or three people, but mainly Harold is like I've done. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Um, Aline Chick. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, basically Harold and Aline Chick are my main people that I've traveled with to most of the country. I've been with Harold. God, how many continents I've been with Harold in? How many like trips have I taken with Harold to different random places? Yeah, yeah, basically. I mean that's a good that's a good like dynamic you have I guess is that you know you always have him to sort of take a trip and he's I guess he's like he's like basically always down to go anywhere. Yeah, Harold's very motivated, especially for filming. He's much more mm -hmm. motivated than me. I have to force myself to like, oh, mm -hmm. hell, I've got to go filming because I have a lot of mental issues with it to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas Harold, his channel being slightly different, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna let's go. I can go to McDonald's and make a film just of me in my Big Mac, and I'm like, oh, I've got to create a story. I've got to think of some mega journey. Yeah. Like, so for me, it's like I need time to build up and be mentally prepared for a trip. And Harold's just like, yeah, let's go here and just like film. Mm -hmm. So Harold's always down, yeah, much more than me. More motivated. Like now he's in, like, he's in Africa, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he said, do you want to come to Tanzania? I'm like, no. <laughs> no, I do not want to go to Tanzania. I wouldn't go to Tanzania if you bought my ticket. I have zero yeah. interest. I mean, no. Maybe I'm it would sure be a good vibe. Eh? Maybe it would be a good vlog. Great vlog. Couldn't care less. Not going anywhere where there's like malaria, dengue, okay, okay. Ebola, HIV. I'm just like, I'm not interested. Do you know mm. what I mean? I'll stick to Europe and uh, a little bit of um, South America. No, no yeah. interest in those places. All right. I get it. Um, but I guess uh, the way it works is that since you uh, travel most of the time, right? You, uh, you, you've been saying how it like takes its own personal relationships. So... Since since you haven't lived a sedentary lifestyle for such a long time, do you feel like, um, like I don't know how to put it. I guess do you still keep like contact with people like back home in the UK? You know what I mean. Or most of your friends have become only like people you talk to, like who either travel with you or maybe people like in the same field, like like me, for example, or, like uh, Simon or whatever. You know. In the UK, um, outside of family. Yeah. I have like one mate, I, maybe my best mate, um, Richard, um, that's in the UK. Um, outside of that, everyone that I know is kind of from one circle. I think, you know, like when celebrities date celebrities, you're like, why are these like actors dating other actors? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just because there's so much goes on behind the scenes with YouTube, right? Or being online and stuff like that. And so you kind of like, you feel comfortable in the presence of other people who you can relate to, um, who also work online and yeah. suffer with the same. So for you, you know, I can come to you, I can send you a message like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know what to do about this or whatever, you know, I'm going to delete all my followers on Instagram or whatever, you know, we can discuss things because yeah. you totally get it, you know, whereas someone who isn't in that world, you, you it's just not as easy to like, they never understand it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, most of my friends are online, um, like YouTubers, probably like yourself, Harold, Simon, couple of other guys um yeah that's probably my like my my closest circle as i say apart from a couple of people back in the uk yeah those are my um that's my circle have you ever had any uh like uh maybe real life acquaintances or friends or whatever be like oh he got famous he can't he doesn't want to talk with us regulars anymore you know well they might think that they might feel that they've mm -hmm. not said it to me but um i'm I don't, no but i I haven't changed. I'm just like, the only reason I wouldn't be as in con just because I'm busier now than before yeah. when I was loafing about, you know, so it's just like, I'm just like, I'm pretty shitty at replying to texts. 
But it's not because I'm like, you know, oh, I'm a YouTuber. Like, who gives a shit a YouTuber? It's, like, it's irrelevant. Like, um, you know, there's much more respect for being an engineer or something, right? Mm -hmm. Or someone who actually does something, like, you know. But um, oh, yeah, I hate myself. No, it's not yeah, that. Yeah. The... yeah, exactly. Yeah, I want to kill myself <laughs> every day. Wait, to, imagine doing it when you're in your 40s. I mean, seriously. <laughs> and you've got a channel. You got up every anger. day, I every mean, day you just... wake up and think, I'm a YouTuber. I've become a waste of space in society. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> exactly history will not remember the youtube exactly. there'll be no statues like you okay, know pewdiepie has got like a hundred million but like if pewdiepie says someone in their 70s i'm a youtuber you know that 70 year old is still like get a job mate like what's yeah, wrong yeah, with yeah. you yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. despite the fact you exactly. make millions um yeah there's no respect for a youtuber and rightly so i mean jesus what are we doing but um <laughs> Uh, I forgot what your question was. Oh yeah, um, I was talking about yeah, was uh, if people, if people, uh, if people like uh, say you, the yes. fame has got into your head or whatever, and you stop talking to them. No, and it's not because. And also, like, have I changed? How have I changed in any way whatsoever? Than I'm not saying you, know, you well, have, but some people clothes. can perceive it that way. No, you know? I know, I know, no. Yeah, no, sure. And I'm, but I'm saying, but I haven't. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I still wear the same. So it's not like. When I go back to England and see like my mates or something, I'm like turning up in like Bentley and I'm like, hey guys, you know, and I'm like blinged up and stuff and we'll flash and like, what has changed in my life? In the, exactly in the side, I wear exactly the same clothes. I go to the same gym when I'm back in the UK, like this 20 month, 20 pound a month gym, like yeah. no air con or anything. Like nothing has changed in the slightest. So no one thinks I've become above my station as we speak. No. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I, I, I guess I haven't really experienced it either because I do try to keep contact with most people. Like if somebody who's a... Uh, well, actually, sometimes you need to like sort of filter it because there's been some cases where, um, you know, a lot of the times uh, I feel like some people who haven't, you know, given a fuck about me in like 10 years. Like, for example, somebody who, from school who I didn't talk to like even in school ever and they just randomly hit me up like, yo, what's up? It's cloud like, chasers. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's not even probably cloud. They probably want to like loan some money or whatever. It's oh. like, <laughs> it's like I don't think I will. I mean, it's happened before, oh. right? So, right. I think yeah, I'm. Okay. I think I'm having an opposite case where it's not much that I have stopped to be talking to people and they're like, "Ooh, you know, he's gotten, uh, you know, it got to his head. He he thinks of like his uh, we're below him or whatever." That's never really happened to me. But what does happen is that when people you've never really talked to just suddenly become very interested in you you know and it's like you know i haven't had that from acquaintances yeah like from like someone from school like i've had a couple of people from school say like hey i remember you i've seen you on youtube didn't you used mm -hmm. to go to you know such and such a school um but maybe because people... it's more recent for you uh, for me i mean i graduated well, school been... not that long ago you graduated school like way you sure. know it's happened way more years no, sure. By. No, I, but no, I think, uh, no, I, I haven't had that, but what I have had, and I'm sure you've had, it's just like fucking annoying people on like an Instagram and like you just know they're trying to be a mate to get something because mm. they like, they get to the point eventually, hey, by the way, would you mind giving me a shout out? Hey, by the way, would you, would you mind like yeah, promoting yeah, yeah. my product? It's like, oh, so like what has been leading up to this? This whole conversation we've been having has just been leading to this point where you can try and get something from me. Like, mm. um, yeah, that's really fucking annoying. Or people dropping your names and titles of videos and stuff like that. Mm. Just because, not because they really I've want never to like, talk that. about. I've never done that. <laughs> I've never used Bold and Bankrupt in a video title to get views. Not once. It's never yeah, happened. And, and you stole my content. I know that you've been using some clips of my videos without asking me. So there will be copyright strikes coming up. My lawyers okay. Right. But you know, yeah, like, the dr we should continue our, uh, like, you know, the drip beef. We should turn it into, like, uh, actually copyright striking and destroying both of our channels just going oh, down imagine, taking, it taking it to the grave taking it to the grave a true battle true battle yeah and i'll be like what did it start over then this argument <laughs> well he criticized his uniqlo sweatpants and that was it no you know exactly, just ruined exactly. it from there no but yeah those people or they they drop your name in a title of a video or something and it's just like they do it in a way kind of sneakily like you know mm -hmm. ooh, um like as if it's like kind of praise but really it's like yeah. mate you're doing it purely to get the views just by dropping yeah, yeah. someone's name in the video it's like piss off just like yeah. create something of your own do you have to like oh, i just people like that just i don't know people like that annoy me just people have no self-dignity you know people i guess some people just uh when they when it comes to youtube some people look at it more as like you know there's some youtubers look at it look at youtube to, as like a form of artistic expression or whatever other youtubers look at youtube as right, strictly okay. business so yeah they're perfect. willing to use these tactics uh yep. that 
might make them look not nice or you know use people stop on people's heads you know to get to the top yeah. and or yeah. maybe they will panza and pretend they're uh, you know fake their beliefs you know like the political beliefs or whatever to yes. panza to yes. a certain audience and you know yeah. and it comes oh, 100 it, it's both left and right they can both panda to certain you know and people do that in order to just get popular so you know yeah. that's what happens in this case as well i feel like this is what I always think. It's like also, I mean, talk about away from YouTube kind of thing. Like in Hollywood, you know, like Hollywood is kind of a leftist. Yeah. You know, it's definitely more to the left. But really, you're telling me none of those like famous actors who like came out and supported Biden or whatever weren't supporting Trump? Like, how is that like possible? Like out of mm -hmm. all those thousands of people, every single one, not one person came out to support mm -hmm. Trump. Just you're like, you're riding the wave of let's play along with I think the game. Some, like, I think some did. I think, um, who was the... Yeah, uh... old... Oh, tell you, don't tell me. I bet his career... It's finished like 10 years ago. Like, it'll be Roseanne Barr. Like, it's not, you're not telling me that like one Hollywood actor no, no, like, no. at the top, The Rock, is going to say, like, I'm pro Trump. No, no, there was no this chance. one. There was this one guy. Um, what's his name? I think. I think John it's... Voight. Yeah, John Voight. No, not John... I'm not talking yeah. about John Voight. I'm talking about, uh, I think it's, uh... yeah, Chris Pratt, Go I on. think. Chris Pratt. Uh, he's like never conservative. Heard of him. He's like, he's, never uh, heard he's of like him. in Marvel movies, like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and shit. I don't watch Marvel movies, but he's like he's like very big, and he's he came he's out. Right, I think yeah, right. he's like in or whatever. But uh, okay, yeah. well, fair enough. Yeah. So there are people with some balls who at least have the courage <laughs> to say what they think, and fair play to him. Um, but it's just like it's like people play a fake game, yeah. Um, in the media to toe the line because, and also because when you've been attacked for something, it puts you back into your shell. I think, mm -hmm. and people are terrified of being attacked again, so they'll go along and they'll play that all nicey nicey and go more to the left sort of thing to like, mm -hmm. don't attack me, don't attack me. You know, I'm one of you guys, don't attack me. My camera's um, freaking out, so I'm trying to just fix it, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It's fine, it's fine. Yeah, like, um, so, so people, don't, they're so scared of being attacked that they'll just move along, you know, to the left, even if their beliefs really are more to the yeah, right. Yeah. So I mean, I'm definitely, I'm just definitely, like, don't I have. definitely think that's the thing that some people do do that in order to just uh, be part of the so-called, like, uh, you know, status quo in that particular industry they're in. But you know, there are some. It's like people when people that... post a black square, Black Lives Matter. Well, on their there Instagram. are some people that and genuinely like... have those beliefs, though. You know, it's not. You shouldn't like. Just oh, of course there are. No, no, no. Of course, no. Sorry, my, no, my no, headphone no, no. fell out of my Roman ear it. again. <laughs> God's sake, I have an issue. I have an issue. Love okay, we're back. Headphones. No, I'm not saying no one supports Black Lives Matter. I'm not saying that like um, no one's LGBT, whatever. Um, I'm not saying no one's on the left like maybe 50 percent are maybe like 90 percent are genuine i don't know i don't know but you also you see people playing the game of like posting the black square do they truly believe in that or is it just like don't attack me i'm part of the group do you know what i mean i think there's a lot of that goes on yeah too. you can because never really tell to i think to me. i think it depends on uh just looking at that person's like history or what have they what they've said maybe in that way you can only be it's the only way you can see if they really mean it or if they don't i don't know at the end of the day, sure. you'll never uh, know uh, because yeah. you don't know these people personally, you know. And uh... hey, wait there, Roman. Something just came into my head. If I can say this, you know, you remember yeah. when there was like the Paris. You remember when there was the Paris attacks, right? The Paris attacks. Okay. And they lit up, and around the world, we lit up with the um, the tricolor. Mm -hmm. We lit up like Big Ben in different places, you know, in support of like the French people. Yeah. Um, you know, a couple of weeks later, if I remember correctly, there was the bombings in. I think it was either it was in Volgograd and also in Moscow. Mm -hmm. A lot of people died, right? Terrorist attacks, right? wasn't one fucking monument around the world lit up. There was no, like, we're all French, je suis Charlie. Mm -hmm. There was no, um, yeah, Ruski, like, around the world. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So it's all politicized. Um, caring about, like, atrocities and stuff is all politicized. You're not allowed to like Russia. You're not allowed to support Russian people who are blown mm -hmm. to bits by fucking terrorists. But you can support certain countries. So I don't know. The whole thing online about, you know, who you support and who you don't support, it's all politicized. I guess uh, just maybe certain... I think there's always been, there's always been, it's just part of the fact that uh, these, uh, let's call them so-called Western tragedies, have always been way more pre represented in the media than sure. uh, like anything that's ever happened in the Eastern uh, Hemisphere, let's say. So for, for sure. example, for sure. like 9-11, you know, it's such a big deal, but you know, we've had terrible, you know, things happen in Russia, like... Um, Islam. Yeah, exactly. Like the slum, for example. But if you ask somebody in America, like no, barely anybody's heard about it, you know. But uh, everybody yeah, in Russia, yeah, every, yeah, not those, for example. Everybody in Russia has heard of nine eleven, you know. Yeah. 
I would yeah. say those are comparable events, you know, 9-11. I mean, and... I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I think, I don't know if you could ever get anything comparable to 9-11 just because in, of the whole, sense, how it was captured. I don't know. In a sense, how uh, it affects it, how we're like shocking and like, you know, sure. outbreak oh, I mean, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, maybe in some ways, in some ways, um, there's Lance worse. Although the numbers mm -hmm. weren't nearly as bad yeah. just because it targeted children. Mm. which is like you know you'd think like there's some things that are just so heinous that even a terrorist would not do you yeah, know yeah. um so to target like a school on the first bell the first day of school to go and target children yeah, yeah. um and do what they did to them is just um well this, this podcast's so... fun isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've gone down a rabbit hole okay. just talking just talking about terrorist acts <laughs> oh yeah, yeah right <laughs> Join us next week where we talk about Auschwitz and the Holocaust. <laughs> greatest, Jesus, greatest, yeah. most fun. We'll be vlogging fun from podcast. fucking Birkenau. <laughs> yeah, imagine somebody yeah, actually. Like somebody that. actually. I'm pretty sure somebody's already done that. To be honest. All right, uh, let's that? let's that? move on from the topic of terrorist attacks. Fair, I don't fair, really fair. have a Forget good segue that. for that one, unfortunately. Yeah. Right. Uh, Let's, yeah. Well, uh, from kids being blown up in Beslan to um, drip. So what do you think about the latest Tommy Hilfiger collection? <laughs> uh, no, we'll talk about drip a bit later. Here's the thing I wanted to discuss, which oh. is kind of, actually kind of deep, but not as tragic, you know, is uh, I wanted to ask for your Good. advice as a, uh, you know, as a more experienced and older person and stuff. Uh, well, what happens is, Roman, you get a girl that you like, you start dating her when you're ready, when you're ready... You invite her home, you introduce her to your mum. I've done that, you know, multiple times. Very good. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Mul Notice how Roman had to drop in multiple player. Had to like say, no. I am, yes, I am a pimp. But uh, that being said, <laughs> good man. Good uh, man. Good man. Um, basically, I, was, I wanted to talk about this is something I posted on my Instagram recently. Maybe you've seen it, maybe not. Um, I, ha had, I made this like post, which was pretty long. I was talking about basically the fact that right now I'm at a stage in my life, you know, I'm 23. I recently just graduated last year, uh, university, you know, um, and I'm kind of, you know, my real, uh, you know, I moved out and my real adult life is kind of only starting now. And I'm in a, in, I'm, I'm in a place where I don't know what, what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, I have no clue where I'm going. I don't know what I want to be in five, wow. ten years. I don't, I don't, for God's sake, I don't feel like Who I does? have any... <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly exactly. That's what I want to say to you. Like, what do you what do you feel like? Have you ever, have you ever, are you the kind of person that worries about the future a lot? You know, and thinks, um, oh my God, you know, I have to plan my entire life ahead. What am I gonna do? And you know, how am I gonna make money in ten years, in fifteen years? Do you think about this, or you just live in the moments and you just kind of let it rock? You know, you don't. Or or was there ever a stage where you where you did think about those things a lot and it drove you mad? You know, because it drives yeah. me mad. That's, what, when that's I, what's going on. I've never been driven mad by it, but when I was living paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. I was thinking to myself constantly, what is my future? Like, am I ever going to be able to have a house or something? You know, am I ever going to make anything of my life? Like, God, how am I going to make money in a couple of years? I was always thinking of ideas to make money. Yeah. Like, I would speak to people on the building sites. Like, there would be more specialist works. Um, like, you know, um, I investigate, like, uh, there might be a driller or something. I'd be like, oh, so how much do you get paid? And where did you learn? And, like, how long does it take? I always think about how to step up the ladder a little bit. Um, but now as a YouTuber, I feel much more chilled. It's like, I see, I think, I see myself, I can see my next two years planned out, I think. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, no, no idea. Um, but I'm not worried about it. Yeah. It's like something, I think I, because... I think offers will come in when I finish YouTube. I think there's enough people who know me now that someone would say, oh, I remember that guy. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, would you be interested in doing this with us? Do you know what I mean? My CV's out there, so to speak. Okay, okay. You know, in yeah, terms of... Yeah, you're creating of, um, a portfolio for yourself, essentially. Like, right, exactly, exactly. And people, and I think, yeah, show your personality. And I think, um, I think people trust you when you... They know you're not a bullshitter because mm -hmm. they've seen... You can't fake it, right? You can't fake who you are but i always think about it. it's like when people like hate on you online you know when people hate on you they're saying oh you're this you said that once you did this you're horrible you're this and i always think it's not a problem because your subscribers know the people who watch your videos know if you're an asshole or not mm -hmm. because you can't fake who you are for a hundred or two hundred videos it's mm -hmm. impossible it will leak out um you can yeah. fake who you are for one video 
You can fake who you are for two. Maybe you can fake who you are for 10, 20 max. But eventually, who you really are comes out. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I think when, when you say the N word on live stream, <laughs> inevitably. Right, right. But inevitably. Get, sure. <laughs> are you talking about PewDiePie? I, I'm actually, I'm, I mean, I'm joking because, like, well, yes, but also, I mean, a lot of people say that word, so it's a, you know, it's a joke. It's like, it's a gamer sure. word. But that's it's the thing, game. that's how, yeah, exactly. I, 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 I like PewDiePie, you know, I don't have any. Well, yet. exactly, me too. Me too. <laughs> now, if he had said that on his second video ever, his career would be over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's a bloody racist, right? This guy's a racist, a scumbag, get him out of here. But because he'd already had, like, however many years in the game, people knew, actually, okay, he said something yeah, yeah, he yeah. shouldn't he's have said, not, but the guy's a, a good guy. Yeah, he's yeah. not a racist, exactly. He's not a racist. Um, so he like so he got away with it, so to speak, if you know what I mean. Um, so he was allowed to continue, and so yeah. So I think when people have seen like you've put yourself out there online and stuff, and people can judge you, that yeah, the, the people know if you're legit or not, and hence offers will come in if they okay. think you're legit. Then offers will come in for something. Don't know what, but something. Yeah, for me, it's like working at Tesco's. Yeah, 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 yeah. For me, you know, I've I've always I've, I'm I'm really thinking about it because here's the thing. My, I have like two biggest struggles, I feel like, when it comes to, you know, thinking about life and where I'm going, is that uh, for my first big struggle is the fact that, you know, I live in, you know, obviously I live in Russia and, you know, constantly like, you know, bad shit is happening and, you know, I'm all the time fighting the idea of moving to a different country, you know, that's a very big point of contention to me, is battle with myself if I want to leave or if I don't. And the second one is the fact that you know you see like i uh in university i studied translation and linguistics and i studied chinese mandarin but like the fact of the matter is is that i suck at chinese you know i graduated but i'm not good you know i couldn't if I, if you if you would take me now i wouldn't be able to work i wouldn't be able to translate chinese for shit you know I could, <laughs> maybe i could be maybe i could be a good english translator but i couldn't be a good chinese not even a good not even a a passable fucking Chinese <laughs> translator, okay? Yeah. So essentially, I feel like my education was fucking worthless, right? You know, and and like right now, if I if I lose my YouTube, for example, right? If I in, not not lose in the sense that like if I stop or like if it dies down, if I stop, yep. you know, making money on YouTube or whatever, I would I feel like I have nothing going for me. You know what I mean? Like my okay. education is kind of nothing. Uh, you know, I'm not good at what my fucking field which i you know graduated and i'm not i don't know chinese i uh, okay. because I, i'm not i don't use it i forgot it right um and i'm not particularly interested in china either i don't want to live there and uh but why did you choose chinese it seems i like, was dumb it was like I do was you like, even like chinese food yeah i do but i, oh, I was sure. like i was like i was like it was like 2015 2014 i had to decide which language i want to study and i was like i didn't really know i wasn't really woke on like china or like what's going on there you know i didn't watch serpents <laughs> yeah, in level 86 uh anyways um i didn't I, yeah i wasn't just really aware it's while i was studying in university i realized that china is like uh you know is a is hell on earth essentially so i decided to not uh the regime i mean right uh and sure. um I was like, yeah, I don't want to fucking go and live and study in China or whatever. I'd like to travel, but I wouldn't like to, you know, anything else to, you know, no. base my life around it. So that's what I'm saying is that I feel like mm, I don't really yeah. have anything going for me because I, I don't even have any job experience. Like my only job ever has been YouTube because yeah. for years I've been, you know, I studied YouTube. I started, uh, started when I was still in school, like in high school. I've never had a proper job. So like, if I lose YouTube, if I stop making money on YouTube, I'm I'm a fucking bum essentially. Like, you know what I mean? So it's that's my biggest fucking problem is that I need to find a way to maybe monetize myself in some some sort of another way, because I don't have I don't feel like I have anything else going for me. You know, it sucks. But I've put myself in this situation. Uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, yeah, I guess. Hodl, Bitcoin. <laughs> that seems to be what everyone's doing is the Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, you know, I can understand it's a bit of a fear because it's less of a fear for me because I'm older. So I'm like, fuck, you know, in like 20 years, I get my pension probably. So mm -hmm. it's like I've only got like a certain amount of time to get to that I've got to survive until like I'm like yeah. pretty much like taking care of in my old age. Whereas if I was starting out now and I was 22, I'd of course, I'd have exactly the same fears of you as you of like what comes next. Because it's so like YouTube is such a um, precarious job because they can delete your channel tomorrow. You can make a joke that people don't mm -hmm. like and your channel has gone. And then what? Like, what, you start another one, it takes yeah, it's years Yeah, it's very unpredictable, basically, you know. For sure. 
Well, you get money, you get demonetized, like anything yeah. can happen. Like AdSense can just randomly, you know, uh, demonetize you, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I don't blame you for having that. So I suppose the way around that, yeah, you start working towards the inevitable end of YouTube and mm -hmm. thinking what you want to do. I mean, do you have any ideas? I mean, you say you've got no skills, but you do have skills. They're just not maybe the ones that are on paper and that get you a traditional job. Yeah, but exactly, who knows YouTube? Exactly. Who knows editing? Who knows thumbnails? Who knows running a YouTube channel? Who knows, you know, creating content more than you? Like, not many people, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you do have skills. Like, I was a new upcoming YouTuber or something. I wanted to speak to him. If I had an opportunity to mm -hmm. pay Roman to, like, teach me what he knows, <laughs> like, I'm going to do that, you know, cut some corners. Yeah, well, there's plenty of I'm people serious. like that. I'm serious, you've got lots of skills. I understand that, yeah. But I, I, I do feel like there is some stuff going for me besides that as well. Like, I do feel like, you know... Sure. I excelled to some degree in like music production and uh, you know, I'm only learning, but I'm already better than, you know, terrible, <laughs> you know, what else, you know, uh, I don't know. I, you know, honestly, sometimes I think of like potential jobs I could, could have been doing if I wasn't a, uh, what I'm doing now. And I feel like, you know what, it's, it's like a random completely out of left field, but I do feel like I'd like to be a stylist or something. You know, I think that would be a style. Okay, true. Okay. I feel like that would be a good one for me. But again, that's like, that's like so unrelated to what I do, I guess. I mean, not really. If, you if got the work, second channel. Yeah, yeah. But I, I barely upload on it to be honest. I think I, I need to get, I need to do more. But I guess it really all comes down to like diversifying in a sense. I need to, I have, you know, I have some time because right now, as far as my YouTube channel is concerned, I feel like I do have a good core audience that watches me, you know. I'm not, I'm not like struggling a lot, you know, sure. I'm not blowing up, but I do, I can continue, you know, making money and supporting myself to, for maybe a few more, I don't know how many more years, but I need to, I need to come up with something that would be like a, maybe a second source of income. And that's the biggest struggle for me right now is just that, I don't know, I guess it needs to, I, maybe I just need to wait for it to like come along or for the idea to come to me. I don't know. I, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, it'd be good if you could start working towards something. But if that idea of what you want to work towards hasn't come to you yet, like where do you start? What do yeah, you work towards? Exactly. I suppose yeah, you, yeah. Could, you could kind of force it and be like, well, I'll work towards that because anyway, that will help me, even though I'm not really that interested in it. But then how would you find the motivation to mm -hmm. do that? It, yeah, it's, it, it, it's difficult. I don't know. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't do know. You, what, what, do, you, um, do you feel like you were in the same like um, mindset when you were my age or uh... I was absolutely terrified of the future when I was your age what wow. was I going to do what was I going to do um, yeah, I had no idea what my future held and it wasn't the opportunity then of course I was around before the internet yeah. you know um, so there wasn't all these jobs that have been created you know whether that's drop shipping mm -hmm. whether that's bitcoin whether that's YouTube you know or like doing whatever on Facebook Instagram you know yeah. those things didn't exist you know um online businesses so there was just much less choice so i think i would have been a little bit less worried maybe okay because mm -hmm. i would have been thinking you know i would think there's a lot more things that would have chimed with me more things that i didn't have to because i hated the idea of doing a nine to five and staying in one place rigidly mm -hmm. i wanted to travel and so i thought maybe i should be like a, a truck driver across europe or something mm -hmm. or run tours there were like overland companies back in the day <laughs> uh, what a what a what a boy chick, you know like the uh, the tri russian uh, truck uh, drivers. long distance truck yeah right, yeah, right. yeah yeah well that would have been that would have been a dream for me <laughs> I mean, a truck driver across like the former Soviet countries driving down to like, you know, across to Irkutsk or yeah, something, yeah, yeah. that would have been awesome. But um, yeah, I, um, yeah, I had so many ideas, but I, I don't know. Yeah. So I, under I understand basically what I'm saying. I totally understand where you're coming from. Um, and I can think it's pretty scary um, because imagine it did end. Like you can be quite flippant about it when the good times are rolling. You can be like, well, if it ends, it ends, whatever. Yeah. But imagine waking up that next day, especially at your age, like, wow, my channel's gone. I have to now go and do something different. Yeah. And this is all I've known. Like, that would be pretty scary. Where mm -hmm. would you even start? Yeah, I definitely um, try to have a yeah. balance, though. You know, I think it's important to not to think about it, not to stress about it too much, because then at that point, you're missing life in the present, I guess. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I mean, you don't have, yeah, I mean, it'd be good to kind of in some way start working towards, you know, the, the aftermath, because it is going to come at some point. But um, well, I feel it might like not be soon. You can have another 10 years. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I'm already trying to, you know, because like, for example, starting this is like a podcast thing that's already sort of diversifying my channel a little bit. So maybe hopefully it's yep. a step in the right direction for me, you know.
I definitely, guess. definitely. And who knows what it leads on to? You know, maybe some radio company, radio station reached out or something like that. I don't know. It could, no, I'm being serious. It could be anything. No, I, you know, I get something. it. Yeah, yeah. You have that interview on the radio in, try. Czech, in Czech Republic. <laughs> yes, I did. And I was very nervous. I was much more nervous with that lovely young man from the Czech Republic than I am with you. <laughs> had to have a couple of beers before that one. And this one, I've just got a coffee. Wait, you, you, I had, you, like, had, you had some beers there. before the radio interview? Yes. Yeah, I had, well, it was actually wine, but I had to, yeah, of course, I was bloody nervous. It was like going out to all like Czech people and I didn't want to make a dummy of myself. And uh, especially okay, I was okay. nervous because I remember there's a, you know, David Beckham. And, yeah, um, of course. He, um, uh, he was going on Michael Parkinson, which is our big, um, our big um, chat show back in the day in England. Mm -hmm. And he said to Victoria, he said, I'm nervous in case he like uses words I don't understand. And I was like, I'd never heard this radio station before. What if he asked me like real deep questions about, you know, like he mistakes my general like interest in the architecture just on a like a a physical level of the Soviet Union and starts asking me about like the, what was my favorite five year plan? Or, you know, what do I think of Stalin's (laughs) argument with Molotov? And I'm like, oh shit, I don't know. So basically I'm shallow. Um, yeah, so I was a bit nervous, and I'm Just nervous. Started, about, started asking you about the uh, deep concepts of Marx, Marxism, Marxism. Exactly, what you think exactly, about, exactly, what you think about exactly, Marxism. Yeah. What did Stalin mean on page thirty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but he wasn't. He was like he was a lovely chap. Um, uh, and also, I'm nervous about. I'm I'm actually. I don't know if I would say shy, although I can be shy in situations. But I'm definitely an introvert. Um, however much I try to portray myself as otherwise in the films and get mm-hmm. into a state an outgoing. Um, unstifled state so I can approach people and make my films but deep down like I'm happiest when I'm just in my little house in my apartment you know chilling yeah. with Fidel or whatever and just that's where I'm like most at soul mm-hmm. is most at rest so yes yeah, so you going to a radio station it's like bloody nerve-wracking it's like you know you, there's so many opportunities you don't know what they can ask yeah. what yeah it's, it's scary but yeah I don't know I've never been to one but uh you know I mean, I've been invited to some stuff, and I mean, whenever actually, I mean, I get you to be honest, because I've actually been thinking uh, about this recently. Is that um, you know, I've been thinking about guests I could have on on this podcast potentially, you know, and I've written like a little list, and one of the guests I really love to get is um, I don't know if you've heard of him, you know, Anthony Fantano. He uh, does uh, music reviews on YouTube and stuff, like album reviews. He's like YouTube's music, biggest music critic or whatever. I might have heard his name. I might have heard his he's name. He's like yeah. this guy with like, he's bald and he has glasses. Uh, anyway, okay. whatever. Uh, he, uh, I, 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 want, I want to get him, but I, I don't really have a way to contact him right now. So please get me a podcast with anything with 10 listeners. Please spam him. Haha, <laughs> you know. Anyway, um, I had a podcast with him actually in like 2016 with Pyrocynical, you know, my YouTube friends. Okay. But he was kind of he's kind of from the same community as me and we were on, on his podcast this anthony fantano guy and i've been a fan of his for like ages and i still am and uh i was so nervous in that podcast like i couldn't it was impossible oh, sure. because and also my english speech was uh, not as <laughs> tell me what happened tell me what happened what do you mean i mean it's not it's not much first of all it was back it was back you in like you 20- couldn't speak like you were just like yeah, it was back. It was back in 2016. So first of all, my English skills were not as good, and my kind of um, I'm way better at rambling and just riffing right now, you know, than I was four or five years ago. I've gotten way better since you know sure. I do this. You know, it's my job. My and my accent improved tremendously, even compared to like five years ago as well. Uh, and when I listened to that podcast, like I just said the word like it's not good because what I'm saying about okay, look, hear me out. In that podcast, it's like even all the comments are pointing it out. In that podcast, I'm oh, literally no. saying the word like oh, every no. five seconds. I'm like, it's like, just like, nervous. like, like, nervous. like, it's, yeah, it's like, it's, a, I'm just saying the word like again, but, you know, I nearly don't say the word like as much as I did back in that podcast back in the day because I was so nervous, you know, and, uh, yeah, I can definitely tell. I, I guess I should have had a few I beers before, before recording that, before I got that podcast. I people guess. say, people say, um, I see some of the comments, they're like, um, get, bald and bankrupt on the joe rogan podcast and like for one i don't know why like it would make no sense okay. i've got nothing really to talk about i don't think he wants to hear about me you know running around looking at mosaics but i mean he, that, he's that probably gonna no, you're probably gonna have if if you if, 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 if i'm trying to imagine you on being on joe rogan i think you'd have something to talk about i don't know um i don't know i don't know but um i like i've never done dmt <laughs> i don't hunt elk um, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. wrestle. I mean, what the hell are we going to talk about? And I don't do um, THD. So I have no idea what you're talking about. But um, but my point is, 
I can just imagine if I was told, if, let's say they said, you know, come on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he said it'll be in July. Well, until July, my life is ruined <laughs> because I'm not going to have one night's sleep yeah, where I'm yeah, just yeah. not thinking, oh, shit, what am I going to say? Exactly. Like, what am I, what's he going to ask? Do you know what I mean? And all those people watching and afterwards, like, because I've seen some people crumble on Joe Rogan. Um, mm-hmm. I've seen some people who just, it didn't like yeah, click. It's scary, kind of you know, being, uh, not a, many. being a public person is scary, you know? I don't know if I do. Yeah, like we're not the public people, are we? He's the public person. No, we the public still, no, we we are, though, to some oh. degree. Oh. Uh, we're not uh, we're not a public as public to the degree of Joe Rogan, but sure. we are though. You know, oh, our every okay. words will is like dissected, and you know, uh, people talk oh. about it. You know, even some people Bloody who are gonna hell. watch this podcast probably gonna have something to say about whatever we said. Oh. In this podcast, you know what I mean? I'm already in my head thinking. Why did I mention Black Lives Matter? <laughs> They're going to yeah, come after Your career is done. Everybody knows well enough I'm a supporter of Black Lives Matter, so I'm good. But Bono Beckham's <laughs> career is done after this podcast. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know Roman's going to change the background when he does the editing. You'll just be like, Black Lives Matter. There'll be a picture of Rodney King or whatever that dude's yeah, name yeah. was he got trampled on. Um, yeah, George. Just um, yeah. yeah, so George Floyd. Yeah, your career is That's over anyway. It's only going to go... Congratulations. It was nice. It was nice. It was nice knowing you. I will now be available on some um, shitty website yeah, yeah. behind a paywall. D- he's, going, he's going on the fucking D-Live or whatever that, you know, right-wing, right-wing uh, YouTube is. Me, Jordan Peterson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Miley Annapolis, you know, just fucking... Everyone, no, who's, been, everyone uh, who's been banned. Milo. Right, so, um, Harold Balder will be there soon, don't worry. <laughs> All right, um, here's the thing I actually wanted to discuss. So, actually, this is good because this is a good segue. Um, oh, nice. we, we just discussed, finally, you know, about people, hell. yeah, finally, at least one good segue in this type of podcast. Uh, when we were discussing, we were just saying that, you know, I was saying how, um, you know, people look at our every word and kind of dissect, and people. Because we're public figures, people really you know, look at our actions, what we produce, what kind of content we make, and also try to dissect it and, you know, sort of, uh, you know, have yeah, their opinion on it. And we were discussing this um, in the, in, our, in like, in just a conversation, but I think this would be a good one to just talk about publicly is, um, uh, you know, this opinion that people have that me and you are, like, doing everything to portray Russia in a bad light and stuff. And, sure. uh how we only sure. show like the shittiest the most dirtiest places and like the shittiest cars and everything and like, guilty yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how people um you know call us out on it saying that you know we're trying to sort of show russia in a bad image which i don't think is true you know we're trying to show the unique part of russia that's Correct. you know you, you, if you want to if you want to continue you know yeah, I get that a lot. I mean, I've had like other YouTubers calling me out and stuff saying like, I'm basically like some kind of agent from the West to like portray mm-hmm. Russia as like some Same. backwards, yeah. like, yeah, third world shithole, um, which <laughs> is, but uh, no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> <Based. laughs> <Only> joking. <laughs> but, um, no, but because those people are so unenlightened that it's unreal, they're stuck in this kind of stupid backwards thinking of thinking that anything that isn't a brand new skyscraper anything that isn't a starbucks is backwards and dirty and we should be ashamed of it and they're projecting that shame that they have for themselves and for their own country onto Mm -hmm. west europeans and americans and west europeans don't give a shit about starbucks or the shiny five-star hotel because we see that every single Mm -hmm. day what they want to see is something unique and when they Mm -hmm. see a khrushchevka or an old shitty larder you know or some gopniks they're not thinking or at least you know the normal ones you know of course there's idiots out there but um they're not thinking like oh what a disgusting place russia is so backwards they're like wow how unique that russia has its own architecture that grew up it grew up in a parallel universe kind of thing and that's what you're doing they've never seen it and that's what you're doing when you're making these videos about like you know the crazier side of russian youtube and stuff it's not because you're trying to portray russia as being like full of idiots and Mm -hmm. stuff or whatever but it's because you've got this whole unique ecosystem of people that don't exist in the west and now it's interesting that you've given people an eye onto russia and basically russia needs to be it's such a vast country but yet it's a black hole it's a massive country that is so unique and it's Mm -hmm. got so many cultures and languages and blah 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 and different ways of doing things and yet people don't know about it yeah so like when people call you out those same people should be thinking wait there Roman is enlightening people about Russia. Surely that's what you want. And yeah, it's not North Korea 
in, in terms of you're going to show it how it really is. Yeah. Like they want you just to like give you give the Westerners the show tour. Yeah, that's know, the thing. The that's nice the thing routes. is that when you get the, these comments, like these people that are very annoyed at you, it's like um, the usual the usual arguments people make. You know, these people who have no idea what YouTube is like, and they're probably never going to be successful on YouTube because they don't know how to. Like, here's the thing. That's we, we, me and you already discussed this, right? How like people comment, why don't you show like a beautiful park or like a cool some oh. cool scenery or some cool like. Oh. It's like it's like who the fuck cares, you know? It's like I'm gonna, exactly. you know, I'm coming out here, I'm I'm vlogging like, hey guys, you know, look at this beautiful beautiful uh, tree, cool tree, you guys. Yeah. Russia yep. has beautiful yep. trees, you guys. Fucking so cool. So Nobody true. cares. Nobody wants to see that. Russia so has true. skyscrapers. I mean, that's pretty interesting, I guess. But for like a one-off video. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. it's not... Nobody cares to see things they can see in their country. We want to show yep. the unique stuff. That's why we show yep. these shitty buildings, you know, shitty cars. Yep. Because you don't see those outside in your streets, right? Yeah, exactly. The idea of showing that isn't with them the thought in your mind, let's show how shit Russia is. It's let's show how different and unique Russia is. Yeah. And that's a completely different mindset. And yeah, you're going to end up when you do that, showing some shitty stuff. But I can show shitty stuff in my country. Like until you've been to Stoke, Oldham, Middlesbrough, I've got just those kind of things as well. So, you know, it's not like I'm saying, oh, my country's so superior to Russia. Because, yeah. you know, we've got like fucking crumbling buildings and inner city well, shit that's, that's, that's how people call you out for me they just call me like a self-hating russian you know yeah, they, they do they do <laughs> they do but i know that you know despite the jokes and sometimes despite your love of um, american culture obviously music and stuff like that mm -hmm. but i know also that you love your own country and that you know there's a lot of positives with being mm -hmm. russian and about russian culture a lot of things that yeah, trump sure. the west in a sense so it's not that you're not a patriot in the slightest it's just that I think, I think it's i think it is patriotism it's like re, re, realizing your country for what it is yeah it's like it's yeah. like you want to you want me to just make videos where i just sugarcoat everything and just show yeah. how like that's what they want it's it's that's it's, what the idiots it's want. ridiculous that's what the yeah, idiots exactly want. yeah that's what the idiots want most people don't They're want that most people want to exactly. see real real shit you know exactly you yeah i mean the fact is you're promoting russia exactly um, yes. what a great service you're doing for your country you're promoting exactly. russia more than any you've done more for russia and for more to gain people's interest in Russia, if only the government would realize this, then all the <laughs> millions they've spent on like some shitty adverts, you know, like yeah, on yeah, RT yeah. or whatever, promoting the beauty of like, look at the mountains of the Altai. Who yeah, gives yeah. a shit? We've look got mountains. We've got the look at the coming blocks of Chilevinsk. Look at the coming blocks of Chilevinsk. Exactly. It's like, oh, when they, you know, on RT, um, I used to watch it a little bit when I had it. Um, and there's like this one guy that goes around Russia visiting like different parts of Russia. And he mm -hmm. would do these shitty, boring things. You know, oh, I'm visiting a shoe factory in Irkutsk. And he'd sit then he'd hammer on the shoe. This personalityless, drivel-spilling bloody Brit. And I was like, Jesus, like, I'll come and do it. And I'll get yeah, drunk yeah, yeah. with some babushkas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what you want. Do you know what I mean? You're promoting Russia more than like all these like high production valued companies. Yeah, and so are you. You know, you were increasing the interest in it. And, and therefore, you know, Here's the thing is that what I'm trying to do, at least to some degree, is that people don't understand this. It's like these people who hate you, they will never really take a hard look on your channel, understand what you're trying to do. Is that what I'm trying to, and I think what you, you do this as well, and I see this in your videos, I definitely realize this, is that you might kind of lure people in and like maybe with some a little bit of clickbaits, like look at this shitty building, look at this shitty commie block, whatever. But then definitely. in another video or maybe in the same video, you would have some actually interesting, insightful information, you know showing the new part of like the russian culture or like you know hey look this is you know this is this you know historical place whatever check this out or this is this uh talking about this sort of historical event or something or uh describing like uh, some side of russian culture and essentially you're luring them in with like you know how oh, look at this shitty building but then you build it on top of that and you're actually uh widening their knowledge about the country and you're uh, making them more interested and the people who hate they they portray it as if the only thing you do is how yes, look at this correct, shitty building correct. that's it correct yeah you know? correct correct yeah i try to i try to give a little bit of information i'm very interested i have a great love for russia mm -hmm. um i just think it's such a unique place um it's so unexplored it's so unexplored there's probably more brits that have been to the amazon than have been to you know the urals mm -hmm. i would imagine you know people go down there backpacking and stuff um yeah. And so I kind of want to move Russia slightly to the West in terms of our consciousness. 
So it's not such a big thing. I think the World Cup did that a lot. I think mm-hmm. a lot of Brits came back from the World Cup mm-hmm. like, oh, wow, Russia isn't quite what we thought. We weren't beaten up by skinheads. You know, like, oh, and, and we I'm were the skinheads. And I went to Russia. <laughs> yeah. <Brits. laughs> and I'm a black man and I went to Russia and I wasn't like racially abused every two. Like, it's um, things mm-hmm. like that are going to bring Russia more towards us. Yeah, yeah, breaking um, the and, stereotypes like, and stuff. Yeah, for sure, which we need to do. We need to do. Because it's, uh, it, yeah, we need to do it for Russia and we need to do it for Westerners so they can come to Russia and realize mm-hmm. what a fantastic country it is um, with problems, yeah. for sure. But um, it's a fantastic place to go. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that's the thing with the, like, the majority of like the commenters is that people like, the, we already discussed is like the majority of people who leave comments, usually it's like insane people. <laughs> There's a lot of Especially insanity in the conversation. Like hate, like hate comments. When people, when people, when a person goes out of the way to write a ha- hate comment in a bit, it's like, get a life, mate. It's like, search well, a life, yeah, mate. Exactly. It's like, yeah. It's like the most, if I don't like a video that someone releases, I just click off it. Exactly. It's like, that will yeah, do. Yeah. I just don't like, watch it. And I probably Fuck you, watch kill yourself, again. you, you cuck sucker. Exactly. You know, it's like, who does that, man? Exactly. Just move on. Exactly. How can like, a video generate such visceral, like, what is your life if you've got such visceral hate towards someone you don't yeah. know? And someone who doesn't give a shit about your yeah. opinion is like, you know, you can hate on me as much as you want. I'm still going to go and make my next video. I'm still going to go and do my next trip. You ain't stopping me. Yeah. So, like, carry on, like, spewing your hatred. Who we actually shit? noticed this, which but, was um, kind of funny, is that, you know, we were discussing how, like, people who comments sometimes are just insane it's like um you know me and you had this like fake drip beef on like our community yeah we were like oh, like bold and me were like yeah. roasting each other like about our drip and stuff and like bold posted a he like had a post saying you know this kid uh no fuck is he's no you know calling me out about his drip and some people literally took it seriously like like as if it's not a joke and they were like comments saying screw that troll bald you're the best or whatever it's like screw that little uh, troll no and also no yeah and also like hey this is beneath you ben like just stick to making videos what the <laughs> yeah, hell are you talking about why are you getting involved in this and some people actually don't... came over to oh, my Jesus video and, and disliked it as well it's like what <laughs> it's just what like is people they're uh, they're at look when i stopped um when i stopped driving in the uk i had to i didn't have a car i had to take the bus and it was the first time I'd taken public transport for a long time. I was always driven. And suddenly when I was on that bus, I was out of the cocoon of the car. I was on a bus and there was like nutters on the bus. There was like the random like shouty dude. There was like the dude with the mad tats and stuff. who was like all mm-hmm. leery. There was like just like the person who like stank a piss in the corner. And like suddenly it's like, oh, you're, you can't control your environment. You're suddenly surrounded by nutcases and like dodgy yeah. people and stuff. I mean, it's the same on the internet. We have a YouTube channel. So suddenly... You've got all nutters from around the world that are coming in, have some kind of access to you by commenting. Like the majority, of course, are not like that. Like, yeah, of course, otherwise you wouldn't be able there to do are, it. But there are some actually like schizophrenic people in the comments. Well, of so. course, of course, <laughs> like... because they've got in- nutters, <laughs> insane people have the access to the internet. In their fucking nutty hostel, yeah, like yeah. in whatever like nut hospital, they've got Wi-Fi. So, of course, they can get on and they can like write all their you know, they're, they're, they can spew their guts out at you. Yeah, it's yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. And totally. what's funny also is um, people say like, oh, you don't get hate. You've got such a lovely comment section. I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, motherfucker, because I'm like, they're deleted, blocking fucking idiots. You yeah, know you, I, mean? I, I, so, I was actually surprised to learn you do that because I don't moderate my comments at all, at all to be honest. I just let well, it all, I just let, let the people speak their mind. And the more comments you get, the better your video does, apparently, so... I don't mind comments about me. I don't mind comments about me. You can say what you want. Mm-hmm. But what I don't like mm-hmm. is um, I was having this conversation. Yeah, right. I was just thinking who I had this conversation with. It wasn't you, it was someone else. Okay. Um, I don't like when they attack each other because then it spreads out and it just makes mm-hmm. an unpleasant atmosphere. So someone will write a comment, for example. This is how it starts. Mm-hmm. The comment will be, hey, man, going through a bit of a difficult time in my life, you know, just split up with my missus. Just want to let you know, like this up video you uploaded today, like it's really like had an impact and it's like, it's yeah. given me a bit of hope for the day. I just feel a bit better about it, right? Nice little message, yeah. right? Underneath it, you sad fucker, <laughs> get a life. And I'm like, oh man, like, do you know what I mean? So uh, that bloke Jesus Christ. is never going to bring anything good to the comment section, block. Yeah, like, that's Because true. What's, he, yeah. what's a bloke yeah, like just that toxic, that Just toxic people, yeah. Toxic, exactly. And those are the people that I get rid of. Because if mm-hmm. you're toxic, we don't need you. Like, I want to make a nice little community where we can take the piss. Like the amount of times people take the piss out of me. And it's cool, right? Take the piss out of me. But I don't want toxicity. I don't want people coming. And then also, like, if a girl appears in the video, 
Right? Oh, and it's course. just like, yes. oh, yes. did you screw her? Oh, anal. And it's like, dude, like, can it's, this girl People are so horny. And... It's like, fucking hell, man. Yeah. It's like, it's like whenever it's I have a picture, it's, it's whenever I have a, this is the reason why I, whenever, if I'm dating a girl, if I have like a, fee, if I have like a, you know, a female, even like friends with benefits, whatever, any situation, any female that I'm sort of interested in, I don't ever post a picture of her or a picture with her Later. because I don't want to fucking see people. It's like, it's because whenever I post like a picture, maybe with a nice. female friends or they could be some female friends in the, in the shots, all the comments are like, hey, you fucked her. <laughs> it's like, f- uh, shut up. Of course. Of shut course. up. <laughs> it's of like, course. it's so weird as well. Yeah, the is, you know, you, you know, know what's the weirdest? The video yeah. You know what's you... the weirdest thing is that uh, after, after that, the weirdest thing is when you, like for example like i had a photo I, I i posted with like um a female friend of mine who's uh dating a friend of mine right uh and uh like a couple of days later me and that guy meet and he's like he's like i i saw your post and like i read all these comments saying that you fucked my girlfriend i'm like i'm sorry <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's Jesus like, why do I, Christ. it's like, it's I've terrible. Had the same thing. It's terrible. I've had man. the same thing. It's I've terrible. had the same thing. I, um, I had a, I had a meal with a friend of Alina's in Belarus, did a, like a film. Mm-hmm. We were eating Belarusian food. The comments were fucking insane. <laughs> I mean, it's like, have you never seen a man talk to a girl before? Like, yeah. what are you going? And, and I'm not like, and I'm not like, kind of like, oh, my humor. Is so like elevated that I don't fuck. Yeah, no, I've sure, got like a sure. British sense of mm-hmm. humor. I can laugh at that shit too, of course. Like we all are, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm not like a bub. I'm not highbrow humor mm-hmm. in the slightest. I'm down in the gutter. Um, but at the same time, it's like give it a rest. It's like not every yep. chick you have to make the same fucking. Yep. You know, we get it. Yeah, ha ha ha. Okay, there's one joke about. Ha. Oh, okay, cool. You have to have every comment about it. It's just yeah, it's mental. ridiculous. It's like yeah, yeah, it's just... I hate it. I hate it. All right, uh, yeah, comments are insane. But uh, <laughs> actually, this there is... is a lot of nutters. Yeah, there yeah. is a lot of nutters. Um, well, what are they I... going to say? Hey, wait there. What's the top comment going to be under this video? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I think know. it's going to be. I think it's going to be. Um, ben won the drip battle. With that, um, the yeah, shades. It's going to be no fuckers and bald bankrupt discuss, d- discussing their gay relationship for two hours. <laughs> it's going to be that. That's definitely it. Or it's going to be something about Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that. You know uh, that. Well, coming back, I guess, coming back, I guess, to the topic of like uh, the, um, you know, uh, providing like cultural insight to Russia or like post Soviet countries or whatever, I actually wanted to ask you this. Uh, what do you think is the worst and the best post Soviet country you've been Oof. to? You know, like in a sense, it, okay. the worst in a sense yeah. of. Yeah. Um, Developments, Don't worry, I've got it. developments and stuff, oh, okay, you know. Okay, okay, okay. I thought you meant for travel. Okay. No, um, I, I mean like, I mean like, what you okay. think? Which, which one do you think is the better country to live in, and the best yep. to live in, and the worst? Like the worst, the, yep. the well, bottom. I've got to tell you, Uzbekistan isn't bad. Okay, this Tashkent outside mm-hmm. it gets a little bit more crappy, but bloody hell, they've spent some money in the center of Tashkent. I'm not saying it'd be my choice where to live, but I was very surprised. Mm-hmm. It's much better than the Ukraine. You know, it's much more developed than Moldova. Um, far. Uzbekistan like, yeah, is far. better than Ukraine? Trust me. Trust me. Yeah, it's wow. more well put together okay. and orderly. The pavements haven't got like bloody bits of metal sticking out and manhole covers missing. Uzbekistan is better than, in that sense, is better than Ukraine. Okay. Um, so the thing is, I've been to Estonia. So Estonia trumps probably like all of them in a mm. sense because mm-hmm. it's like very westernized yeah, yeah, yeah. okay we're talking about Tallinn. um the worst for infrastructure i think is probably georgia really um, georgia, yeah i mm-hmm. think so i think so like tbilisi what about even, armenia just houses stuff? being held up by yeah armenia is slightly better than georgia I think, armenia is better sense. like yeah but i think I, so I, yeah for, for some reason in my concept i thought georgia is would be better off than Armenia for some reason. No, there's no, like the center of Armenia is very well taken care of. It's got mm-hmm. the metro. It's um, got some nice outdoor. Yeah, I think um, Armenia is better put together um, than Georgia. Okay. Georgia is like it, everything's falling down. Everything's crumbling. Nothing's been developed mm-hmm. in the last God knows how many years. It makes it kind of attractive and quaint in a way. Yeah, yeah. Like you've got these old crumbling old houses being held up by scaffolding poles, just like lying against them mm-hmm. to keep the walls up. 
but yeah, big cracks. I don't know if it's because of earthquakes and stuff, but Georgia really is. Like, and I, I'm not saying anything negative about the people of Georgia or anything like that. So I like Georgia. Oh yeah, Georgians traveling. are amazing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not saying that, but their country is like completely run down. You travel outside of Tbilisi and you see these other towns and it's mm -hmm. nothing's changed. I love Georgia you know? because I feel like um, it has a really big, like um, very creative people in the sense that, for, for example, for me, even today, you can see it is that like most of like a lot of the modern fashion is actually Georgian. Like uh, how, okay. do I, how do I okay. make, it, make this make sense? Like I'm sure you've heard of Balenciaga, right? The brand. Yes. yes. So the guy that's in charge of it right now is a guy called Demna Gvasalia. He's Georgian. So oh, okay. he's from okay. Georgia and they've created their own brand called Vetma, which is also one of the biggest. So like Georgia, like a guy from Georgia is like at the forefront of like men's fashion in the world, right? Not only men's, but women's as well. So like okay. that kind of stuff, you know, like Georgia creates a lot of, you know, there's a lot of very creative, like people coming out of Georgia and stuff, you know, currently. Okay. Okay. I, I actually don't know, but they do say like Georgia uh, or Tbilisi now has the vibe that maybe Berlin had yeah, um, yeah, in yeah. the 80s kind of mm -hmm. thing. It's the new kind of, you know, startups mm -hmm. and things, the things happening and creating the bars, the funky bars and the fashions and stuff. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So that in terms of infrastructure, it probably is Georgia, I would think. Um, and in terms okay. of the best, well, I mean, Estonia. Know, I mean. <laughs> well, Estonia, yeah, but Estonia outside of Tallinn. Okay. It's still okay. It's still okay. Yeah, it is okay. Probably Estonia because it's like nothing can compare to Moscow. I mean, Moscow yeah. is such an international, like well-run, orderly city. It's not my favorite place, but, you know, it's such a, um, a well-taken-care-of city. They've obviously invested billions in the place. But yeah. is Moscow Russia? You know, there's such a difference, isn't there, between Moscow yeah, and yeah, yeah, know, Perm, you know, um, or someone like Novokuznetsk. You know, there's two different mm -hmm. countries. So it's kind of hard to say. But I would say the worst probably Georgia. Um, and the best is um, probably Estonia, I would think. Okay. It shows you. You'd say, uh, you'd say, Russia, you'd say Russia is like... Uh... Is like in the bottom half or the upper? <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. No, it's second. It's either first or second. No, it's not. Oh, okay. It's, no, it's mm -hmm. second. It's far ahead of Ukraine. It's um. Which I actually was surprised by. To be honest, I thought Ukraine would be on the same kind of uh, I don't know. No, Ukraine's uh, in some ways a disgrace. What's been done to that country? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the potential in that country is immense. Um, okay, what if we so take, much what going if we forward. Take... What if we take like not only post-Soviet but also satellite countries like Poland, uh, Czech Republic, well, okay. Hungary, whatever? Um, I think they're far ahead. I think yeah. they're far ahead. But then even, again, even then again, Estonia, to Czech village. for example, right? Yeah. Um, no. Um, probably all in about the same level. Mm -hmm. Probably all in about the same level. Yeah, Czechia is but... fucking sick. Like the Czech villages look better than Russian cities. It's, it's like yeah. I was like in che Czechia. I... I was in Czechia. I was like, what is this? What the? F this is Czechia. fucking. This is this is yeah. Russia in year two hundred twenty two two hundred two two thousand two hundred whatever you know, maybe. Listen, Czechia, Czechia for some reason, um, I don't know if it's like the Germanic influence. Yeah, they have sorted their shit out. They have had like good leaders, obviously, since like the collapse mm -hmm. or you know since like nine uh, eighty nine or whatever, um, because that's just a well run country, yeah. you know. Um, so of course they have massive tourism influx that probably helps in terms of like filling up the coffers and also they're near to Germany. So there's probably a lot of like outsourcing and putting companies yeah. in Czech Republic and that's stuff. True. But, um, that's a, but yeah, you're right. You don't go like, there's no drunk stumbling around like in Czech villages. Like there are drunk people, of course, uh, you mean that? the same way yeah. as there are in some like Belarus. They have some hobos you know, very... in Prague though. Sure. <laughs> oh, hundred percent by the railway station. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Even definitely. in like uh, yeah. parks and stuff I've noticed. Yeah. They do. No, of course. Yeah, no, it's not paradise. But of all the places that I've been, it's the only place that re actually I liked. I like I could live in Tallinn. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think Prague is Prague is my place. I yeah, think yeah. that I'll um, lay down my Yeah, I'll, I'll, I love Prague. I really want to go again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come out. Come out. We'll do a vlog in Prague. Trying every beer yeah, yeah. in Czech Republic. Yeah, that's like that's that. actually a good uh, that's a good meme for when uh, for when uh, when COVID's over. I really want to, I just really want to go, you know, I, it's, it's painful. I've been aching to go to Europe for God's sake. <laughs> hey, you are, I was going to say you are in Europe, but actually I I'm think not, you're, no. <laughs> you're not, you're in Asia, aren't you? You are literally yeah, in think, Asia. You I discovered think, yeah, that yeah, yeah. in the markets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, technically I was bullshitting, I think, because I was confused. Okay. Uh, here's the thing. The actual Asia Europe uh, border is in Magnitogorsk, 
which is in uh, the Chelyabinsk region. Like, right. okay, is that further to the east or to the west of you? Uh, that's to the uh, that's to the west, I guess. Yeah, that's to the west of so, Chelyabinsk. So you're in Asia. So you're yeah, in Asia. yeah. So okay, uh, in Magnita Gors, they literally have like a bridge that is like if you cross the bridge, you go from Asia to Europe. So, wow, yeah. well, how cool to do that. You have to go and vlog the bridge. Yeah, Magnitogorsk is pretty cool. It's like, there's like a lot of abandoned, destroyed places as well. It's like, yeah, it's, it's a good City one. City of Bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. City of Bones, built on slave yeah, labor, yeah. twinned with uh, Nova Huta in Krakow, mm. two of the great industrial cities of the um, former Soviet mm -hmm. region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a place to go, I suppose, for your holidays yeah. in the summer. Holiday in Magnitogorsk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've actually went recently. I had like a family thing there. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, um, actually, here's a funny, I guess this is, again, something I really never really asked you. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you, what, what music do you listen to? And explain your random love for 6 9 Treyway. <laughs> Treyway! I love that guy. I love that guy. He's so out there trying to be hard and a gangster. I want to just, I wanna just give some context, like right? Like, the context is, I think... This started, I think, when you came to Chidabins, like, for the first time, and you would literally, like, you would call me on the phone, and you would be like, Treyway! <laughs> Didn't like, even know what? what? <laughs> no, I did, but I'm like, where is this? No, I where? didn't. Oh, okay. I, I, I was did. like, I, I was like, why so. is Bald and Bankrupt, this 40-year-old Brett, talking about Treyway, and, like, what is, what is going on? Treyway. <laughs> Who does, no, actually, I mean, like, okay, um, I'm going to try and have this conversation without making myself sound ridiculous by dropping, like, youth speak. Okay. Um, no, I was going to say, when he dropped this track, I'm not going to say that. Like, like That's I just fine. discovered, like, yeah, I just... When he released this band. song. When he released this, <laughs> when he released his um, seminal hit, um, Boo Gummo, Gummo. Um, Gummo, 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 Gummo. <laughs> and just like, no, I just, there was something about the hard bass and the way it kicked in. He's like, hang off car. I'm a fucking da da da, and I don't want to say the words. Um, bloody hell! Already the Black Lives Matter. Already I want some me. rubber. <laughs> yeah, right, and so I'm just like, wow! I just love this. You play it over. It was like there's such short songs, like, and then you've got this crazy character, and he's hanging out with guys with machine guns in the streets and stuff. And I was just like, yeah, I just, I don't know. There was something. There was just something unique about that guy. I was just like, oh, okay, like this has kind of caught me. Like he kept saying, Trey way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You obviously know more about Treyway than I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the whole story afterwards, like, you know, how he went to um how he went to prison, like snitched yeah, on yeah. the ball, got out, and he's come out. But his music afterwards not as good as the ones yeah, before. Yeah. He had like, I two agree. or three hits I agree. I agree. that were just absolutely banging, absolutely yeah, yeah. banging hits. But actually, what do I listen to mostly? Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. actually well, uh um, yeah, yeah, continue, continue. I'm sorry. I just I, I just wanted to ask you about a bunch of rap music, but uh, okay, let me ask, I guess. Uh, because yeah. here's the thing, like, I don't, you really, you wouldn't really strike me as a person to listen to rap, but I remember when I was, uh, when I was in Chelyabinsk, when, like, off camera, I was, like, drunk, and I was, like, rapping Kanye West lyrics, and you would, like, you would, uh, sing along, essentially, like, you would know the lyrics as well, and I'm like, what? Wow. How does, wow. how does Born and Bankrupt know Kanye West lyrics? What is this? How does this old fart know? Like, no, shouldn't he be listening it's not, to the it's Beatles? Not the... I wouldn't be. I wouldn't expect you to be a fan of, or not a fan, or no. I like Kanye. I like Kanye. I like Kanye actually. Um, I don't know like all his album tracks, yeah. um, but like his hits, I've always liked. I've always, yeah, yeah. and I think he's such, such a creative guy. I've got a lot of respect for Kanye, mm -hmm. um, and I like the fact that he's different. I like the fact that he's a bit out there, not afraid to be him. You know, when it'd be easy, just to keep his mouth shut and just play the game, mm -hmm. like he doesn't. Um, so I like Kanye a lot. Um, do I like, but rapping, no, rap's not. Yeah. Although the very first single, because we used to have like singles and albums, right? Yeah. I like used to be able to buy a single, one song on vinyl. Mm -hmm. The very first single I ever bought, now only some Brits my age might remember it, was called um, Stutter Rap. Um, uh -huh. Well, no one's ever seen what we mean from the age of 13. We've all been caught in a da da. Oh, anyway, is this Stutter Rap? He was stuttering and you could uh -huh. get away with it now. So they'd say you were hating on stutter. Yeah, yeah. But that was the first single. That I thought you were going to say, like, uh, some freaking jungle record, like, uh, Wicked, Wicked, Jungle wicked, is Massive, <laughs> something. No. Am I a Yankee? No, I'm a Londoner. Um, yeah. Um, what is, um, what, what I don't listen to rap. Yeah. Um, but, 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 but what I do listen to on the road, I am obsessed at the moment with a, a genre of music um, from South America. And it's called Cumbia. And I like a certain type of cumbia because I'm pretentious. Mm -hmm. I like cumbia from a city called Monterrey in Mexico. And it's like this slow down because cumbias are all jolly. It's mm -hmm. like 
South America, it's jungles. Mm -hmm. It's like women on the beach of Rio. It's like the jungle drums. It's like, you know, what you imagine South America, okay. outgoing people. But yeah, then like a festival. up in, yeah, festival music, exactly that. But then up in Northern Mexico, it's a little bit different. You've got the cartels, you've got the narcos, you've got this, the um, sicarios, you've got people fucking mm -hmm. being melted in like barrels of like um, of acid and shit and pulled down drains. Yeah, yeah. So they develop their own kind of cumbia, slowed down, a bit dirtier, a bit like kind of hint mm -hmm. of kind of danger to it. Songs about, you know, cartel leaders and stuff like that. And that really grabs me for some reason. So in the mornings when I want to like get in the mood for filming and get myself into a good state, I always listen to that kind of music, but principally my cool. ideal, my, yeah, it is cool. Um, but principally the music I'm into, like you said, like, what do I like? Forget Cumbia. Um, I suppose British indie or American indie even. So things like the Libertines, Baby Shambles, things like, um, uh, I don't know. God, it's so hard to say. Uh, older stuff, a lot of 60 stuff, um, Stones, mm -hmm. Bowie. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. I'm not very. You listen to like uh, you listen to like uh, like uh, post punk or whatever, like Joy Division or some shit. Um, yeah, Joy Division, um, Iggy Pop, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Lou Reed, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm just not. I've fallen out of music. You know, I used to have such a big record collection. Yeah. But I think when the internet came along, it's just I just put on like what's ever there on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I don't sit. I couldn't sit down and listen to an album. My attention span has disappeared with the internet. I couldn't listen for 45 minutes and just like yeah. listen to the lyrics and just think I just, about it. I just like to, I like to, I actually do like to do that. And I like to, one thing, I, the way I do it is that I just go out for a walk and I will just listen to like an album I've never heard or something. Perfect. And actually Perfect. now I'm trying to do a uh, conscious effort to listen to less rap because I feel like, um, you know, I listen to rap mostly all the time, you know, because I grew up with it. Like the first out of the first artist I really ever got into was Eminem. Then it was like 50 mm -hmm. cents okay. and it just went from there. And uh, I always loved rap music since I was a kid and it still continues. But now I'm trying to consciously <coughs> listen to other bands that like, you know, I want to get into like, um, I want to get into something like Radiohead or whatever, you know, kind of just to okay. listen to okay. some different okay. stuff. Well, that's you know? a great band. What do you, what about Russian music? Is it also like Russian rap and stuff like that? Or do you like really, more of the more I don't really, chilled I don't stuff? Really, yeah, um, I don't really. There's a lot of really good, really talented Russian or Russian-speaking, let's say, artists. Um, as far as Russian rap, I don't really listen to it because I, um, you know, I'm such a, I'm a rap snob. Okay, like you know, okay. Okay. I'm not like the, I guess, like the no regular, uh, normie sort of rap fan that listens only like to the hottest stuff out. You know, I like to really get down, listen to some old school, and like kind of really see like where it all comes from. You know, that kind of stuff. I'm really into hip hop as a whole. So when I listen to Russian rap, I, I, it's like all so derivative of Western, you know what I mean? Yeah, yep. I can't even like, you know, and also, you know, these things that rappers say in English, they sound so cringe in Russian, you know? Uh, well, can you give me an example of that? It's like, it's like when, it's like when a, a rapper in, a, in, like, in, in American rapper says some like, you know, I'm fucking your bitch or whatever. In Russian, it just right. sounds way worse. <laughs> is that because it's in your own language so it's maybe kind of i guess kind of i don't know right. i guess i don't know but right, um right, right. i like those i like uh, there's like i guess i could only name one russian rapper that i really like now is his whole uh he's called husky and the reason why i like him is because his music uh he doesn't talk about like what what a western rapper would talk about he's like it's very very russian like it's so filled with like this russian depression i don't even know how to describe it but it's really good it's like duma rap yeah, I would say so, kind of. Wow, yeah. that yeah. sounds so good. Okay, oh, I like the his, sound of that. He oh, looks well. like a Gopnik as well. He looks like oh. a proper Gopnik, but he's he's actually like his music videos and his like style is super. It's super creative. It's he's not like a dumb yeah. guy. He just he yeah, looks yeah, like yeah, a yeah. regular ass like yeah. Gopnik, but he's okay. actually like big brain, you know. So oh, okay. I like. Oh, him. definitely. Yeah, um, I'll have a look at that. Uh, but uh, yeah, Russian. There's a lot of Russian great, great Russian music. Um, I just, oh, for sure. I just seem to, I just seem to, conf for some reason as well. This is a thing I notice is that I seem to consume way less Russian music than Western music for some reason. Okay. okay. And also, okay. Uh, it's like the same for me, I guess. With uh, I, uh, I listen to way less uh, female artists than male artists as well, which is the thing I notice same. myself. Yeah. Same. I used to listen to female artists. I used to be big into like Sheryl Crow. Mm -hmm. um, I used, there were so many female artists I used to listen to. Uh, Zemfira. Yeah. Um, She's awesome, yeah. But now, 
Oh, Zem Fear is uh, stands up there, is up there. Like that short period, maybe like three or four mm-hmm. year period that she had when she was dropping albums. Um, and just like she was just coming out with like banger after mm-hmm. banger after banger after banger. And I think anyone who travels to Russia, like you need to know Zemfira because yeah. you're going to hear it at some point in like some in some bar or some club or something. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to join your friends and sing along. Um, Zemfira, yeah, is a is a is a brilliant female artist. And apart from that, I love Mummy Troll. I think their oh, yeah. album uh, Morska, um, mm-hmm. uh, the, the red one with the blue um, like circular, I think mm-hmm. is such a great album which stands up with anything that we have in the West or anything. I just mm-hmm. think lyrically, uh, musically. The last three songs in that album are just um, are, are masterpieces. Um, I think that is such. He's a also great such album. a. Uh, um, he's, he's like so personality. He's also so like unusual. He's like you know for Russia. Yeah. The way he acts, yeah. is like very flamboyant and stuff. He's like yeah. he's like a real really yeah. artistic and stuff. Yeah, I love I love people like he, that. You know? He studied Chinese. He studied Chinese. Oh really? University. Okay. I yeah, guess he, I need to yeah, become yeah, the new Mumi Troll. Mumi Mumi Troll. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe. But um, yeah, and obviously Kino. I mean, I'm sure everyone who's mm-hmm. watching this who has some kind of interest will know yeah, about yeah, Kino yeah. and like Victor Soy. Every, um, every, single, person, every well. single person on my channel is asking me to make a, like a documentary video about Kino. And here's the thing. Right. Kino, well, it's Kino. Kino, Kino. Right. Uh, I need to address it. It's because like, uh, you know, I, I kind of said a couple of things about it. Like I want to do it. I actually started writing the script for the video. Like I wanted to make a video like uh, Viktor Tsoi, the father of Russian Doomer music or whatever. I thought I thought of course. Oh, for video. sure. That'd be an awesome. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a great but the video. thing is that I just, I really know like four songs, but you know, maybe like it's just, oh, it's just like past me. You know, it's like, it's not the music of really of my generation per se, or not necessarily. I'm not the kind of person, you know, I'm like for Russians, like for young Russians like me right now, there's definitely a lot of um, how could I say different subcultures that have been fo- that already formed in terms of music. For example, there's a very big subculture of like there's a lot of great like post punk bands like shoegaze bands in Russia that are formed right now that are very much inspired by like you know all these like Kino, Joy Division, etc. You know, um, uh, they could be inspired by inspired by like R- Lou Reed as well and stuff. And then you have like the more uh, community of like the most the more like hip-hop oriented and that's me you know i'm not necessarily mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. so i don't really know much about kino and i haven't really listened to it. and i feel like i wouldn't be it wouldn't be right for me to make a video if i don't really know the music and i don't really listen to it so i think i'd only make that video if i like sit down and have a thorough listen to like the discography or whatever because otherwise yes. i feel like I, I i i don't know if i can speak on it because i don't know if i know much about it you know it's strange for me to hear you say that you only know four songs of Kino. Well, maybe I know no, I know a little bit more, but not much, you know. I just mean because, like, I mean, that music is so ubiquitous in Russia, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Everywhere you go, you know, if you know yourself, if there's a busker playing a song in the underground, it's a Kino song. I mean, there's yeah, yeah, no yeah. other group like. Or you see that that dumbass song, I, that dumbass song I hate. You probably heard it called sure, Batarika. Yeah. Uh, you know that one? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I fucking Kika. hate. I Whoa. hate that song, man. Oh, yeah. Because is the that reason... because you've heard it so much? Or... Yeah, exactly. It's like the go-to d- song for drunk dumbasses to sing, and it's like That's true. it's That's like true. whenever you're That's trying true. to sleep Such or whatever, there's some song. some people uh, screaming uh, in the streets. They're probably going to be singing that song. <laughs> it's like. I hate it. I right, hate it. right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, no one's, no, I, I don't hate it yet because no one's been outside my house in Prague yeah, yeah. Um, singing that song. But um, yeah, that's another one that you hear as well. Um, yeah, Kino, I, I think you probably know many, many of Kino songs, just you don't quite, you couldn't like, yeah, yeah, I guess, there I guess. Somewhere if you that's true, yeah, that's for true. Sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, what about films? What are you into? What's the one film you could watch like for- just a hundred times? You could watch again and again. I honestly I don't know. Probably some, probably something by Tarantino, to be honest. Agreed. Agreed. I'd say, I'd say probably. Um, I'm. I don't know. I really like Django. Okay. That's I thought it went on a bit long. I thought it just went on a mm-hmm. bit too long. It didn't have to have the last bit of rescue. Okay. Anyway. Well, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I guess maybe. I, I just. I haven't seen it in a long time, to be honest. So maybe I. Um, mm-hmm. I'm remembering. I'm remembering it way better than uh, it really than it really is. I don't know. I I used to, as a kid, for some reason, or like as a teenager, I used to love fucking Fast and Furious Tokyo Trip. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think random, as a teenager, there's nothing it's, wrong with it's that. That's the most random. Uh, yeah, I used to love to watch that movie, but uh, yeah, it's probably like Tarantino oh, or, or, something, or something by Scorsese. I don't know. 
Because I went on a okay. Scorsese marathon yeah. recently and I watched a lot of his movies and they're really fucking amazing. Which one stood out for you? Well, I really like The Irishman. That one was great. Uh, Taxi Driver, obviously. And uh, Goodfellas. I, I, okay. I wasn't really crazy about Raging Bull, to be honest. My friend was no, like, I didn't it's like the it. best one. I'm like, I don't know. I wasn't. I haven't seen Casino, but. It went on a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, the, well, yeah, but The Irishman is also long as shit, but I actually had fun. Like, I, I didn't think it was too long, to be honest. It was great, in my opinion. Have you seen The Irishman? You're out of sync with your lips and your speaking. Uh, you, so you am, I, am I lagging for you? You're lagging now, yeah. It's probably you're fine for me. It's probably just my fine. Okay, so it doesn't matter. It's just yeah, you, yeah, you're yeah. slightly out of sync. It doesn't. <laughs> um, I haven't seen the Irishman. No, I heard mixed reviews about it. I didn't um, check it out. Um, no, it's great. The film. Oh, okay, fair enough. The film I could watch again and again is Pulp Fiction. That's my favorite film mm, of all time. Mm -hmm. Um, every time I watch, because I can't watch films two times. It's just like, I know what's going to happen. I can't, I don't know how people do yeah, that, yeah. which is strange because I know what the next lyric is in a song that I've heard uh -huh. hundred times. And I can do that. But um, yeah, but with Pulp Fiction, like, I've watched it probably 20, 30 times. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just, I just love that film. I think Fight Club um, yeah, I think for these me as well. I didn't get it. I, it I didn't understand it. I'm like, wait, I kind of know like rationing because people are like, oh, it's him and it's his old tree. And I'm like, but how does yeah, that yeah. work out? What? And they were like, <laughs> They were on a plane together. What? Yeah, I just it went over my I head. even read the book as well. Really strange. Did you? That's how I like. Yeah, I liked it. I think it was my one okay. of my it was one of it's like one of my dad's favorite movies and he kind of put me onto it. So, yeah. What um what what books? What kind of books do you read? I really to be honest, I really need to start reading more because I recently I haven't read Tell shit. Tell me about that. Yeah, I've um I mean the last books I've really read that I really remember. I mean I've read a bunch when I was in university because we had this thing where um um let's see, uh, at English class in English class you had to essentially read like a certain amount of pages in, of a book in English per month and like um then uh, like tell a short summary and like have a glossary of like of like words you don't know and then you would like uh, the teacher would like check you. Essentially, it's like a way to expand your uh, vocabulary and stuff by reading a book, and they, they check your progress. True. And uh, ones I really remember was 1984, and uh, what else did I read? Great yeah. book. Well, that's the one I remember the most vividly. I think that I read recently, but uh, I don't know. I, I really I really should read more. I, I haven't read in a while, in a while, and I don't even have any book I I'm thinking of picking up. To be honest. I notice, I notice a definite, a definite increase in brain power of my vocabulary when I'm in a period of reading. Mm -hmm. um, then when I'm not, and when I travel, because I don't want to carry extra stuff, I don't bring books, and um, my brain goes to mush. You know, I forget you things. Don't use I'm not as eloquent. No, I don't like them. I can't get on with them. I need mm -hmm. to have like actual paper in my hands. So I just, I've never, I bought so many ebooks and never finished one of them. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just find my brain goes to mush unless I'm. Um, actually consuming literature and reading off a page yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah i'm learning spanish at the moment and that's helping because at least it's forcing me to think about something mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. you know and try and try and you know increase my yeah i've my been brain thinking capacity. about picking up a language uh, as well just for the sake of it like i've been thinking maybe i should try like pick up like german or something just just to try i don't know i don't know because i haven't okay. tried learning I mean, any European yeah, I mean, language apart from uh well spanish is very easy and it opens up a whole wide of the world, a whole wide part of the world mm -hmm. for you, you know, if you do it. But it depends if you're interested or not. But, um, yeah, I'm surprised. Like, Spanish compared to Russian, it's just, like, so much simpler. Um, just the grammar and it's stuff. A, it's just such a simple process a, of learning. Yeah, maybe, well, maybe because it's there's more of a connection between Spanish and English, I guess. Well, definitely, if you don't know the word, you say, it like, the English word with an accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, principale. And yeah, 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 the teachers yeah, yeah. are like, oh, well done, Ben. How do you yeah. know that word? <laughs> it's just like yeah, yeah. guess. Yeah, there's a lot of um, synonyms with um, English for sure. It's, it's much simpler. Yeah, it's, it's long words because, you know, English is a Germanic language. Spanish is yeah. a Romance language. But uh, English has a ton of borrowings from Romance languages. Like, <sighs> you know, yeah. so uh, you would have a lot of those. I mean, it's annoying because you probably get a lot of false friends as well, right? Like... Uh, yeah, when yep. I when I um like in Russian, for example, there's a ton of these. Like for example, act like for for example, the word actual and uh, 
uh, like aktualny is like not the same and stuff like that. And it's like the same word basically, but it's not the same. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, strange how it developed with a different meaning, although it's basically yeah. the same word. All right. Um, yeah. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Uh, you know, we've been talking for like almost two hours at this point. So I'm, I don't. I, you know, here's Have the we? thing. Have we? But I flew yeah. by. Yeah, yeah. We. Um, that's the thing we because bored people. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm pretty sure a lot of people happens. are going to listen through to this. I think this was a good conversation. I'm just no one's thing. been here for the last. Wait, there, Roman. No one's been here for the last half hour. Don't, we can talk whatever. No, we no, 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 no. We can drop whatever n words we want. It doesn't matter because no one's watching. Nobody's <laughs> fucking the watching this. Stop hating. Even the haters are like, fuck this shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Who yeah, cares yeah. what his favorite book is? What yeah, is yeah. the bloody book club? Boring, boring <laughs> fuckers. Who is the core of these two boring fuckers? <laughs> Boring old exactly. farts talking about exactly. books and shit. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, uh, yeah, we completely went off track. Oh, yeah. being, no, that's fine. That's fine. There's a really no track because, to be completely honest, we've ran out of all the notes I had. <laughs> Okay, so, enough, and I think it's I pretty see, good because, like, here's the thing: um, th because this is my first pos first podcast, I really don't know how to like segue into it and end a podcast. So I guess I don't really have any other way to just abruptly say, like, you know, guys, here we are. I've well. <laughs> you know yeah here we are we've bored you enough um yeah, yeah. don't forget to like and subscribe and um <laughs> don't don't click past the adverts make sure you watch adverts <laughs> i don't know roman um i'm glad that i was as i said in the beginning um thanks for the invitation to be on the first one i was a big fan of yours for um so i discovered you i think before youtube like before i was on youtube and mm -hmm. stuff and i've always told you this um, my favorite video on YouTube <laughs> is Roman's. <laughs> Can I mention it? I mention yeah, yeah, it? for sure. For sure. Um, Roman's got a video where he responds to Indian haters and the comments that he got. And I think it's the great, it's the funniest. I remember being in New York with Harold Baldwin and say, You've got, we were sharing a room. Yeah. Um, and I said, You've got to check out this video. This is hilarious. <laughs> and we were both watching it and we were laughing so much because we've had the same comments from Indian yeah, subscribers yeah, and like yeah. commenters. And basically, in this video, Roman trashes india like he trashes it like he does not hold yeah. back he says, and like, i'm pretty sure I've, like... I've named a few um, i've made a few racist remarks in that video don't watch the video okay. this is me um, explaining this is me explaining why me uh you know saying the n-word 5000 in the uh pr private conversation does not reflect my actual values and beliefs exactly yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly yeah there were some nasty remarks but anyway i found them funny to be honest with you it was a brilliant video so um yeah go and watch them most indians like you've got two sets of indians you've yeah. got the city indians who are clued up and understand that their country's a bit fucked up but and that people like yeah, yeah, take yeah. the piss out of it and they go with it and they're like yeah we understand it's funny for us yeah i got comments from most then people. you've got yeah, exactly. There are cool Indians out there. But you've also got like a lot of people who like are in villages and stuff who have access to internet now because there's like a lot of cheap internet in India. Um, and they're just the ones who are not enlightened in the slightest, but they suddenly have access to your comments section. It's a lot like China, you, like, basically. Fuck, yeah? Probably, but yeah, I've just never... I don't know, because they don't speak mm -hmm. English, whereas in India, a lot of people yeah. Yeah, who yeah, speak English. True. In China, I've never had any contact with them. But, um, so, yeah, so don't take it personally. I'm sure if you go to India, you'll be fine. As long as you avoid the villages of like... Nah, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. Gujarat. I look so different okay. from that video. They won't even recognize me. <laughs> you bloody fucker. Yeah, the mother chot. Uh, you mother chot, you bad chot. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, I remember when I first got my first mother chot comment on my, like, you know. I was like, what is this? Chod? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. You scamming, you scamming socks in India, you mother chot. We'll, sh we'll bloody beat you, you Britisher. <laughs> I love that you call me a Jesus British. Yeah. I'm like, you yeah, the right yeah, word, yeah. for God's sakes. Right, yeah. All right. All right. So we've alienated the Black Lives Matter <laughs> and the Indians now. I think we should quit. We should, yeah, we need to end this podcast, say, sir, before uh, both. You, you've, you've already driven your career into the uh, grounds, you know. I don't want. For me. <laughs> it's, this is my suicide note. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to drive my career into the ground as well. Yeah, okay. exactly. All right. Exactly. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, this is. I think this was great. This was my uh, first, I guess, episode of my podcast, which I didn't even create a name for. To be honest, I'm probably just gonna call it the No Fuckers Podcast. To be honest, uh, but yeah, uh, sounds good. I like it. I like uh, it. Thank you, Ben, for coming on. Uh, this was a fun time. Not at all, Roman. I enjoyed it. Nice having a conversation yeah. with you. And um, no doubt, I hope in the future we'll do um, we'll do a few more collaborations or something. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's always a pleasure talking to you to get your insights, you know, your experience. You know, I love you, my dog. All right. Thank then. you. Thanks, everybody, Thank you. for listening. In. George Floyd. 
Black Lives Matter. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Stop ruining See my later. career. I'm going. Stop ruining my career. See you later. Sorry, All, right. All right. All right. Peace, everybody.